just as a heads up, anybody desiring to speak needs to fill out a blue sheet on uh, that's on the back back desk back there. And when you fill it out, just leave it on the desk. Nope, bring it to me. So these are all conditional use. Uh, this step, yes. This one is uh, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. That's the Okay. And uh, the first two are conditional use. Keep the Okay, thank you. Good morning, how are you? Hello, young lady. Yes, I'm in town. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm doing well. I won't Here's be able to be here next week. Uh-oh. Where are you off to? Where are you jet-setting to now? We are... Um,
Oh, we'll take that. Yes, sir. Hey, you need some I didn't know the case number. It's the one on the Okay. 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 No, Miss Mark, you can, Miss Mark, you cannot say anything about that case next week. Nothing. Yes, I can. Miss Mark, I'm telling you, cannot. Yes, can. Miss Mark, it's quasi judicial. Here Ms. is the swearing of the staff, Ms. and there's a question asked. Miss Mark, Miss Mark, legal court, you cannot say anything about that case next week. Yeah, it's quasi judicial. Yeah, you gotta, it's gotta be heard yeah. at that time. Yeah, you can, you can, you can. Miss Margaret, I'm telling you, you cannot. Respectful. I'm not, I'm not trying to disagree. Have you me. seen the letter from the email from Keita? Miss Margaret? Have you? Yes, I have. And, and that is the question that I'm going to ask. Miss Margaret? I'm, I hope legal tell them. Yeah. Uh, what happened? Yeah, uh, just the Everything's good. Yeah. You know, everybody asks that now. It's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh huh. The meeting of the Escambia County Board of Adjustments for September 15, 2021 is hereby called to order with five members present. We have a quorum. Will the clerk please swear in members of staff? Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Help you, God. I do. Thank you. Members of the board, copies of staff's resumes have previously been provided and remain on file for reference. The board has previously recognized staff as expert witness. Does anyone have any questions regarding their qualifications and abilities to offer expert testimony? Seeing none. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm Margaret Hostetter. Miss, and ma'am, ma you need to be sworn in by the oh. clerk. Do you solemnly swear from the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, help you God? I do. Thank you. I'm Margaret Hostetter. I am the applicant for one of the two appeals on Monday's special hearing regarding the tree ordinance. The reason I'm speaking now, asking a question of, your, uh, of yourselves and the staff, is because your um, statement just then indicated that, um, that you read, indicates that um, the staff are uh, witnesses expert witnesses to these various cases. And so I'm going to read a little statement, if I may. Um, I have requested, and I have the email here, um, of the staff that certain members of the staff of the county who have either had um, involvement with this case I'm appealing, or who have knowledge of similar um, situations in the past, be available Monday as witnesses in my appeal. I received an email at 4, like 47 yesterday afternoon, in answer to my request from Ms. Kia Johnson. Others were copied, Mr. Jones and other staff people, with my request that certain members of the county staff would be available for witness in our case. And the answer I got was, the Board of Adjustment does not have the authority to subpoena witnesses. I, I also had mentioned in my email that I was wanting to possibly 
um, interview or question the, um, the owner, the um, engineer, and the person in his staff that is working on this particular project we are appealing. Now, I, I understand you may not be able to subpoena outside people, so to speak. I understand that. But my question is, well, let me continue to read her answer. Therefore, there is no way to compel their attendance you will have to coordinate with each individual witness to determine if they're available and willing to testify in your case. So I would like to clarify that the board is willing to agree that in this appeal on Monday, witnesses who are ones that I wish to call or possibly call for testimony, their expert testimony, and their particular testimony on that case will be available. Um, it is another example of what I fear is um, the process that led to this decision we're appealing. And now we're trying to appeal it, and it appears that we're going to be told you can't have witnesses from our staff. Now. Normally, in these hearings, Mr. Holmer serves as the expert witness, the primary one. Other times, there are additional staff that serve. Um, he also chairs the meeting, quite, a, you know, your meeting. Because Mr. Holmer is one of the parties in this appeal who is, his actions are in question, I was told by Mr. Day, you know, Director Day of the Natural Resources Department, that um, Mr. Homer will not be able to serve in that capacity in our hearing. So probably Ms. Johnson, the Assistant Attorney, will serve as the chair of this um, appeal, the appeals on Monday. Um, so is, I would like is, to know I'm if, sorry, this yeah. is all very problematic. Yes. Um, this case should not be addressed outside of the hearing that I'm is trying scheduled to find, on Monday. There is it is a, a quasi-judicial process. This hearing today has an agenda, and there are cases on the agenda. This case that you're speaking about should not be discussed during this hearing. It's, I'm not discussing the case. I'm bringing to your attention that under the rules, and I have this printed here, of procedure for the Board of Adjustment, you can send a request to the administrator asking for information that you would require. I, and I'm asking you to request of the administrator that the people who are staff members in this county that I've mentioned in the email, giving plenty of advance notice that I'd like to have them available to speak on this matter, that they be available. And that is my, it's not about, I'm not call, I'm not speaking about the case. Well, I've got it here written. Um, it's the rules of procedure for your board. I've never and seen it, that. I'm, um, well, it's in the Land Development Code, Chapter 3, right here. And I, I do plan to give that to you as uh, my uh, ex if example. If I may, Chairman, if I may, if I may, if I may respectfully thank you, Ms. Kristen Hewell, for, uh, for your legal advice in this matter. I do petition the chairman to, to let's move forward, to not engage, because as, the, as Ms. Hughes stated, and she will be here next week as well, that, that all of those issues, we, the email that she was referring to is, is, is being taken out of context and out of content. But again, this is not the right forum, nor the proper venue for, to engage with this so chairman. I do ask that you, because again, what we're hearing next week is going is completely it's a completely different situation. So so so, I, 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 no comments need to be made because that could be additional grounds for. If it goes to the next level, mm -hmm. where it can be, it can cause your actions as acting as a quasi judicial board to be in question as well. So for fairness. For equity and for transparency, 
I do petition you, Chairman, Mr. Smith, to let's move forward. And staff has been, the legal has sent the email to Ms. 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 Hallstetter. If she disagrees with that, she can I do would, her own means. I, I have would, no I would, choice but to do what it says here. And it says, this is a copy of the procedures, staffing and assistance from the Land Development Code for your board. And it says, additionally, the BOA is authorized to acquire from the count, any county offices information and advice that it believes will aid its work. However, such requests shall be made through the county administrator's office to ensure the proper allocation of resources and timely response. In other words, the only way I would know that the people I rely on, who are the employees who were directly involved in this case, will be able to come answer questions on the record as expert witnesses and because they were involved in this case, um, if they don't show up, then I have been um, denied a true appeal. And I don't have the right to uh, subpoena them or even request that they come here, but you have the right through this provision in the BOA um, in procedures to ask the county administrator to make those people available uh, during that time. And they are crucial for our decision. We cannot present a case if the people involved who are the employees of the county and the experts are not willing or able to testify. Here is the document I have. I, I think you should communicate with the clerk to the board. I'm communicating with you because of what this rule says. This says you, you only have the right to request to this clerk. information and you have to go through the uh, county administrator's office to request it. He directs the staff. You this is in the weeds, I know. direct that to the clerk. Your, your I will hand it to the clerk. And you may communicate your concerns to the clerk. I'm communicating my concern over what Mr. Smith read as the procedure for questioning the staff as witnesses and, and expert witnesses and bringing up the fact that this is going to be a situation unusual, highly unusual on Monday that involves this very issue. Staff being witnesses, staff being expert witnesses, and staff turning up for the hearing. Mr. Smith, again. The title of your document is, is what? That you're going to present to the staff Right now, it's just a Word document that includes um, the, the reference from the Land Development Code uh, regarding you, the Board of Adjustment, your procedures, your rules. And it is in that format, and that is why I'm appealing to you in this very unusual case. Believe me, I am very <laughs> sorry that I have to ask you to ask the county administrator to ask our staff to be able to appear for that hearing to be able to answer under oath questions regarding that case on Monday. Smith, but that is what the attorney, and I'll give you the copy of this uh, email between uh, okay. us, said. Uh, Ms. Smith, I do petition the board strongly, the, urgently, quickly. Th this yes. item is not on the agenda no, and we not. really can't address I'm re it today. I'm, re I'm regarding when you say in your in your reading there of this issue of swearing in the staff as witnesses, you say, does anybody have any questions? That's and that is my question. That's to these cases today. And your comments are, are valid, and they'll be in the minutes. And we can address this, I believe it's on the 20th. It's and Monday. It, it will be duly noted. It won't be duly noted unless the people are here. And they're not going to be here, probably, from the indication of the email, that unless you make the decision to request the, their presence should, it, should they be requested to wit, be a witness, and you have to make that appeal. I can't, and you have to make it through the county administrator because he's Smith. their boss. We Smith, very again, may the well do will that, be, but not pardon today. Me? We very well may do that. I don't know how 20th, you, when other could today. you, We're when other, what other time could you do it when you don't have any other meetings between Mr. now Smith, and Monday? Mr. Smith, if I, I, I may, we should move on. If, if I may, and, and just to give her 
Again, the process and the procedures will be followed accordingly. Our legal counsel responded to her from legal prefer with, with all of the process and the policy. So I do strongly suggest all of those things, Mr. Smith, that we move forward because we're taking time from citizens who came to this board at a set time to hear their case. That case will be heard and discussed thoroughly on next week. So I- the witnesses don't hear. Board Thank members, you, sir. Uh, I we have heard this, and uh, is there any ex objection to moving forward with the cases at hand? I'm no, not asking you not to move forward, sir. I'm just asking you to ask the administrator to see if uh, to be assured that these employees of the county, who are and should be staff witnesses, expert witnesses, particularly in that c appeal, will be here and be willing to speak. We, we're not going to do that today. <laughs> well, and, there's no uh, other time. Uh, if, uh, if it is done, it'll be on the 20th. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, there is one thing since this has come up. Uh, we all got the agenda and the file yesterday. I was going to suggest since uh, Ms. Hospitaler's uh, appeal is second it's a motion to dismiss that's a preliminary matter i was going to suggest that on monday that we really shouldn't be discussing no, this no 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 well no i think we i don't think there's anything wrong with saying that i think her matter since it's preliminary ought to go before we hear the main case and Do i you, was just going to suggest there are two motions to dismiss for, there's one for each case. There are two cases. There are two cases. Yes, yes sir. It's a very unusual situation. So there really are two appeals. No. So I'd like to make a motion that we go ahead and uh, accept the staff as expert witnesses. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? Those in favor signify by raising your right hand passes unanimously. I will leave these with the clerk. Board members, do you have you. any objection to uh, submitting these documents to the county, which appear to have uh, some relevance? Seeing none, county, county will have them. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. You all. Let's move forward. All right, the Board of Adjustments, the BOA, hears administrative appeals, variances, and conditional use requests. These hearings are quasi-judicial in nature. Quasi-judicial hearings are like evidentiary hearings in a court of law, however less formal. All public testimony will be taken under oath, and anyone testifying before the BOA may be subject to cross-examination. All documents and exhibits that the BOA considers are entered into evidence and made part of the record. The giving of opinion testimony will be limited to experts, and closing arguments will be limited to the evidence in the record. After hearing the testimony and arguments for and against the proposed action, and before making its decision, the BOA will consider the relevant testimony, the exhibits entered into evidence, and the applicable law. Because decisions of the BOA relating to variances, conditional uses, and extensions of development order for site plan um, approval are final, unless overturned by a court of competent jurisdiction, the county may issue development orders and permits for properties in accordance with the decisions of the BOA. However, if applicant requests the issuance of any such order or permit and such order or permit is issued, the applicant and not the county shall bear any risk that, is, that such decision may be set aside, the development order or permit may be revoked, or the development may be otherwise enjoined by the reviewing court. Any applicant for relief from a decision of the BOA for said actions or any aggrieved party as defined by state law may seek review of such decisions by filing an appropriate pleading in a court of competent jurisdiction within 30 days of the BOA decision. The date of the BOA decision shall be the date the BOA voted at the conclusion of the hearing. Whenever the BOA denies an application, no new application for an identical action on the same parcel shall be accepted for consideration within a period of 180 days of the BOA decision. Any person aggrieved by a decision of the BOA relating to an appeal of an administrative decision may within 15 days thereafter apply to the circuit court for review. Each individual who wishes to address the board regarding a particular issue must complete a blue request to speak form and submit it to the clerk of board. 
These forms are located on the, on the table at the back of the Commission Chambers. You will not be allowed to speak until we receive one of these completed request to speak forms. We must have these completed forms for public record. The BOA meeting package for September 15, 2021 with the Development Services staff's findings of fact has previously been provided to board members. The chair will now entertain a motion to accept the BOA meeting package into evidence. So moved. I have a motion by Judy. Second. Second by Jennifer. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Pass it unanimously. The chair will now entertain a motion to accept the BOA meeting package. We have done that, sorry. Do we have proof of publication? Yes, sir. Did the publication meet all legal requirements? Yes, sir. Ex, ex parte communication, all written or oral communication outside of this hearing with members of the BOA regarding matters under review today are considered ex parte communications. Ex parte communications are re presumed prejudicial under Florida law and must be disclosed as provided in the Board of County Commission Resolution 96-13 before a decision by this board on any administrative appeal, variance, or conditional use requests. The, case, the chair will ask, as each case is heard, that any board member who has been involved in any ex parte communication regarding the respective issue to please identify themselves and describe the communication. First case to be heard. Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry to interrupt, but can we get a vote on the uh, waiving of the reading of the legal advertisement and the resume minutes? Did I not do that? Not yet. Sorry. Do we have proof of publication? Yes. Did the publication meet all legal requirements? Yes. Chair will now entertain a motion to waive the reading of the legal advertisement. Do we have a motion? So moved. Motion by Judy. Second. Second by Jennifer. Those in favor, raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. First case to be heard is conditional use 2021-14. 10, 4, 11, and 10413 Gulf Beach Highway. Has there been any ex parte communication regarding this case, board members? Seeing none, does anyone have knowledge of information obtained from a site visit or other sources? Seeing none. Does any board member intend to refrain, refrain from voting due to a voting conflict of in, interest? Seeing none. Would the individuals who are a party to this item please come to the podium and identify yourself. Please state your name and address for the record and wait to be sworn in by the clerk. Good morning. Tom Hammond, Hammond Engineering. If you both, oh, go ahead. My name's Keith Johnson. I'm with Wetland Sciences, uh, 3308 Gulf Beach Highway, Pensacola, Florida. I'm asking to be recognized as an expert witness. I've been recognized by this board in the past as an expert witness um, as water quality, as it relates to water quality, navigation, and environmental concerns. And I am also requesting to be sworn in at as an expert witness, and I've been sworn in front of this board and the planning board in multiple times also. But we'll welcome questions if you want to check it. Okay, I believe Mr. Johnson has previously been recognized as an expert witness. On many occasions, yes. So that, that is so done. But I don't know about Tom. 
Yes, he has. I can. That, I can. that has been also yeah. okay. But if Board members, so any of the If you want to go through the process, please do. I don't want to circumvent the process. What? But he has been. Well, what would you offer that, your? That's fine. The board board have any objection to recognizing these two as expert witnesses? I just would like to know, uh, Mr. Hammonds, what would you be your field of expertise? Okay, in land development in Scammy County. I'm sorry, I, I didn't. My in land I'm development issues. The land me. development issues in Scammy County. I've been in business 20 years and licensed for 20 years, and I've obtained and as built certified over 500 projects with development orders in Scammy County. So you're an engineer, yes, architect? Sir. I'm an engineer, president okay. of Hammond Engineering Incorporated. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any, any other questions? So you, the board is recognizing you all as expert witness. Let's finish the swearing in. Uh, do you both solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and the, the, but the truth, so I hope you God? I do. I do. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. You were provided a copy of staff's findings of fact. Yes, sir, and we agree with them. You agree with the staff's findings? Yes, sir. I'd still like to do our own presentation. I think probably at this point, uh, board members will have staff make a presentation. You may sit, Tom, and we'll call you back. Okay. Good morning, Caleb McCarty, planner with Scamia County. Um, here we have our location map showing the property off of Gulf Beach Highway. We also have a 500 foot radius zoning map showing the property is owned commercial. Our future land use designation of the property is mixed use suburban, MUS. It is an airfield influence planning district of two and the aerial showing the property is currently vacant. This is our public hearing sign that's placed on the property. This is looking south on to the site towards the bay. Another photograph looking south onto the site. And that concludes our maps and photography for this case. If you'd like, we can um, proceed with our findings. So the applicant is requesting a conditional use approval in the commercial zoning to allow for a private club in the commercial zoning district. Um, under, under criteria one, general compatibility, our findings of fact show that this 1.03 acre property is located on the North Shore of Big Lagoon in an area of mixed use or mixed residential uses under commercial zoning. The property to the east is a large condominium. The subject site was once granted a development order for a 20 unit, 11 story condominium. The proposed use as a private club can be compatible with the surrounding land uses, but will require a planted buffer between the site and the single family uses to the west. Concerning criterion B, facilities and services, our findings of fact that the necessary water, electric, sewer facilities are available to the location. All facilities and services will be reviewed through the site plan review process. Concerning Criterion C, on-site circulation, our findings of fact show that on-site circulation will be via a driveway and parking lot assessing Gulf Beach Highway. All required parking will meet the requirements of the LDC, Land Development Code. In addressing Criterion D, nuisance and hazards, findings of fact show that the club activities will occur at scheduled times and dates and avoidance of nuisance and hazards to adjacent properties and properties in the immediate area will be evaluated during the site plan review process. Concerning Criterion E, solid waste, we found that solid waste services is available for the subject property and the waste container will be screened per requirements of the Land Development Code. Criterion F, concerning screening and buffering, findings of facts show that buffering is required between the use and the single family dwelling to the west. Submitted site plan reflects this requirement for the proposed planet buffer that will be reviewed for consistency during the land, uh, site plan review process. Criterion G, signs and lighting. Our findings of fact show that the proposed signage and lighting will be assessed also during the site plan review, press, review process. Lighting should be directed inward and avoid impacts 
on adjacent as required by the LDC. Criterion H, site characteristics. The size and topography on this site appear adequate for the proposed use. Given the unique nature of the club and the distance to Pensacola Pass, this use would be appropriate for this property. Criterion I, the use requirements. There aren't any um, specific requirements listed for this conditional use. And so in conclusion, we found that the proposed conditional use does meet all the required criteria and we do recommend approval for this case. If we got any questions, we're available. Board members, any questions of the staff? Applicant? Uh, I had use. some. Um, can we go to the filing, the petition that the applicant made, the very first on down, okay, on down, on down, halt right there. Uh, one of the criterion is that parking would be adequate for this. Mm -hmm. I looked at the site plan and I'm just a layman, so I'll, I hope you'll accept that. <laughs> but I counted 18 parking spaces. I was wondering how you were going to accommodate a general monthly meeting of 50 persons. Certainly, that's a great question. Um, and, well, mm -hmm. let me go ahead and just lay it out. Yeah. They also plan to have a various events, I presume, like these... Mm -hmm. billfish tournaments and that sort of thing. These are going to be outside events, I would imagine. How will, uh, how will you accommodate that? That brings into question noise and the nuisance criteria. And the last thing, uh, or at least the one that comes to mind, is the lighting. It's my understanding that for this board to make a decision uh, that the criterion is met, we have to have competent and substantial evidence. Is that your understanding? Yes. What, I can't find any competent and substantial evidence that there is any kind of lighting diagram or any kind of uh, lighting uh, exposition of how it is going to be. This is one of those that the DRC will decide whether or not they get uh, their development permit. And how are we to make a decision on competent and substantial evidence if there isn't any evidence in the file? Help me on that one. Gotcha. Um, I know the applicant probably can speak to some of those. Um, the requirement for the development review process, the parking and those possibly, this thing may change. The, the site plan definitely may change based upon those criteria. The, the purpose here is the use. Is it compatible with the surrounding area? Those type of things. All those site plan uh, review process, the lighting, if it's not adequate, technically we're not there yet. If it's not adequate per the LDC standards, parking, buffering, all those things, the site plan wouldn't be accepted and approved by the development review and a, process. And another thing is raising, going to the nuisance criterion, is alcoholic beverages going to be served? Right, and if, if they are proposed, um, the applicant can better address that. If they are proposed, then there are regulations that address that concerning distances from conflicting uses. And well, how is, I guess, and then the, this old goes back to, I guess, criterion one, uh, is this compatible with essentially a neighborhood? Right. You've got uh, a condominium, you have the one home, uh, and I see a, on the photograph it shows some other single family homes that, that appear to be. Right. And How is this compatible with that kind of neighborhood environment? With the findings that um, the applicant presented in his application um, show there's several other commercial uses um, that, you know, was, was documented for, for, for those um, commercial zoning. It showed that um, it would be compatible, the small, small neighborhood type of 
you, and this is what this is considered. If, if you go through the LDC, um, this really props up as a permanent use in our agriculture and our rural mixed use zonings. Um, but for whatever reason, it's a conditional use in our commercial zoning, which and more intense uses could potentially go there. Um, but we found that this neighborhood type of use um, would be compatible with the general overall area within that radius and those type of things. Um, and, also, and the applicant, he did provide that evidence there. And we agree with that. And also, the, uh, one of the, I think the last thing on the, his uh, application was for his various things they were going to potentially do with the property is, is that they were going to use it as an event uh, area for weddings and all that. And again, I, uh, and that's going to draw in potentially more than 50 cars. And I'm just wondering how uh, you're, uh, and if you have any outside events, uh, how, uh, how is that going to fit in to a neighborhood, essentially? I'll let the applicant address that. And if, if I may, yep. if I think Kate, think you did a very good job. And I, and I want to add, Mr. Godwin, those are those are those are good questions. But some of the some of the questions that are not germane to the to this case in point at time, but they're good questions to be raised. Number one, the lightning provision. As we do with all of our DRC projects, we're gonna make sure of that lightning because that, that has been a major problem. Light don't but, shine. So so part of part of the DRC process, and that's the part of the DRC process, and you can raise that if there's want to. We're gonna make sure, Mr. Hammond, and I believe that they're gonna make sure that that the lightning stays on the site. And that the lighting be, plan would be required. Right. It is required by the LDC. And if they don't meet that, my, my review is because this is mentioned in the conditional use approval process, we're going to make sure that they either enhance it or they do something but, really, really follow the code. So but the Mr. Has been with all due respect, Mr. Jones, there's no evidence of anything. There's a couple of these or several of these where it's, and you know, you and I have had this conversation before yes, sir. Uh, uh, about you know go, go to the you know trust us, take it to the yes, DRC. Sir. And this thing, Mr. Godwin, and he, and your board can make special conditions. Your board can say we we'll approve this with enhanced lightning provisions. You can state that the board have the authority to put other special project conditions on it. And I can tell you right now, every every that every, within, within the last year you've been making these cases and making those points, everything that you have raised at the DRC project, we, we send it to the DRC and they look at it and they say, yes, this is what Mr. Godwin raised, this is what the board raised. And, and the board and the DRC, they do reference those. And the, the, the reviewers, the applicants, they have been doing it because you've been well, raising those questions. I know you're saying that, I know you're saying, but how can we be assured? It goes back to, if it's raised by this board, it got to be followed. If not, that's grounds for appeal by someone. If you make these lightning, special project condition, parking, our code, that's why some of these things got to be reviewed by the subject matter experts. And if the parking is not there, if they don't meet it, they're going to have to come back to this board for a variance or something, or they won't get a development order. Because, now remember, it's only the minimum standards. It's only minimum standards. That's the review that this code says. Now, when it comes to, if there is alcoholic rules and alcoholic usage, again, the land development code is only, it's only generalized when it comes to alcohol usage. There are other rules and regulation that this code does not address. But if they decide to do that, they're gonna have to follow those other Department of Revenue rules and regulations, the other provisions of the code of ordinances that they gotta follow, but we can only, only you and this board can only look at the requirements of the LDC and those other nuisances. If there are some nuisances, the code of ordinances can address that, and they have been emphatically doing that. So, so again, I know you said, well, trust us, trust us. You have some concerns about that. We do, the DRC, since you've been making these concerns more strongly, we have been and we will, and Mr. Hammond, we work, sometimes we agree, sometimes we don't. But Mr. Hammond and I know there's always perfect understanding. So, 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 so these things will be reviewed and highlighted and emphasized 
but this board do have the right, again, I'm closing, to make special project conditions. That is the right of this, of the BOA. Well, Ms. Mr. Jones, one last thing, and I don't want to hog the show here, but the potential for traffic, I don't see how you're going to stuff potentially all this traffic into 18 parking places or whatever it is, my count, my, like I said, you'll have to forgive me, I'm yes, a layman. Yes, but, uh, and if you have these events also, that's going to draw in the general public and I don't know how the neighbors would uh, be especially delighted to have, uh, you know, hundreds of people uh, Understood. in vehicles. I mean, how does that comport with meeting the criteria for parking? Because the code only says minimum standards. That's, it's minimum. If the code requires more, once we review, we would say you got to have more. If they don't, if they don't have what is required, you got to come back and ask this governing body for a variance. And at that time, <laughs> at, at that time, if the board feels like they that they do not, the board don't have to grant them a variance to the additional parking space that they may that they may need. And so so the there code, are checks and balances in that. But right. again, those things we have to look at at the appropriate time. And if they don't, my staff, we, we I don't want we understand about parking. We believe me. And if there's a, if the, an event is going on and it's overwhelming, the code enforcement would definitely get involved. Trust me, they do all of the time. And there so, are so provisions I, that, you know, special event type of parking, there are provisions that would otherwise allow that as well. Um, and and to reiterate, the, the only assurances we can say is that the LDC will cover it. Yes. Um, as, as, but the code does rely on for buffering and screening, for instance. It does say is there's some type of condition opposed. Yes. Um, then those screening um, will take precedence. So yes. it, what it's referring to is the fact that the decision is made through the, this type of action. Um, that those things could be implemented if there's something more stringent that you know um, you feel is needed um, for those surrounding uses or adjacent properties that maybe are foreseen or something like that. Those can be implemented to reiterate what Mr. Jones spoke of. Absolutely, yeah. we will. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you. Yes, sir, Mr. Gunn. I would like to hear from Mr. Hammond to discuss some of that stuff because I think he probably has the answers to all of your questions. Thank you. I've never been preempted by a member before I got to make my, make my presentation. Um, you were waiting patiently. Respectfully, you know, y'all just swore in expert witnesses and this, and they're not up there. Y'all do make decisions on the use, but, and we've had this discussion before, which is why I did such a, a narrative and a site plan. I've heard y'all say this before. Y'all get tired of people saying, hey, it's going to it's gonna meet the LDC and go through DRC. That site plan went to the ECUA for a pre-app and to the county, and then I changed it to meet the code and what everybody wanted. So before I get off into it, I am going to respond to some of this. In the commercial district, we can do an alcohol all day long without coming here. In the, in the commercial district, we can have a marina, commercial marina, all day long without coming here. We're here for a clubhouse. So that's what I would appreciate if y'all consider is we're trying to get conditional use to have a private clubhouse on this parcel, not a marina. No, we're not selling alcohol. Parking requirements. You got to meet the minimum standards and then you're allowed to park on the rest of the lot without making it a parking lot. So if we had overflow parking, you can see on the site plan, there's, we could have double the parking that we got on there. So I'm also the president of the Pensacola Big Game Fishing Club, and I gave you all a narrative because so, that ain't part of the criteria, so if you all have questions about the Big Game Club, I'll be glad to answer them. Keith or I will, but we'll just go to the criteria. General compatibility. We are proposing a 2,500 square foot clubhouse. We have two meetings a month, we have a Christmas party, and we have an award ceremony. We have them somewhere else. For 50 years, we ain't had a clubhouse. We do hope to have the juniors and the ladies billfish tournament there. 
know where we've been having them? Up until COVID, about a quarter mile east of here at Lost Key for the last 10, 15 years, and never heard any complaints from anybody in the neighborhood, nobody. You usually have 20 or less boats for those tournaments. The International Billfish Tournament, that tournament will continue to be at Pallet Box. This facility is not big enough for it. So it will not be happening at this facility should we get it proposed, I mean uh, approved. General compatibility, this is, these are the things that are around us within a half a mile. Snug Harbor condominium, which is single family, multi-family residential, single family residential houses, Grand Lagoon Yacht Club, private club, Lost Key Yacht Club, Marina and Lock Club, South Wind Marina, Commercial Marina, Perdita Convenience Store and Gulf Beach Hair Designs and Big Lagoon Jet Ski Rentals, all that's within a half a mile of us. We're compatible with what's around us. Facilities and services. Because of what I knew y'all liked, that's why I did a site plan, that's why I wrote that narrative, that's why I went to the ECUA already and I went to the county already and met it. So I got Joe happy in life safety over there with our little turnaround, less than 150 foot. Water and sewers there, I already know what they want us to do for sewer, we're going to have to have a little lift station, pump it out, tie it into force main. So all the facilities and services are there. When it comes to trips, well I mean, I mean, we normally have about 30 or 40 people on our general membership meeting. There's only 15 board members. That's who shows up at the board meeting. That's not a whole lot of trips. Not when you got 86 units next door in a condo generating six trips a day per unit. That's from the Institute of Traffic Engineers. So facilities and services are there. We're not going to put any impact on Gulf Beach Highway that isn't already there or is not significant compared to what is there. <clears throat> On-site on circulation. Again, I gave you a site plan. We modified it. We put the driveway where Jason and traffic wanted it. I had it on the east side, and he said move it to the west side, move it away from Snug Harbor. We moved it. Everything's ADA, ADA compliant on on-site circulation. Nuisances and hazards. I don't know how much nuisance meeting twice a month is. I mean, it's not going to be a whole lot of nuisance. Scale and intensity. You know, twice a month is not a whole lot of intense or scale or operation of use. Unreasonable noise. Well, we've got a clubhouse. We're going to be inside, just like we can't hear what's going on inside Snug Harbor. We're going to have a meeting. Glare. You know, lights, we'll have a lighting plan. We gotta do a lighting plan at DRC. One thing I don't think this board understands, to so have a lighting plan at this point, matter of fact, if I wasn't the engineer and the president, we'd have to pay somebody four or $5,000 just for this site plan to get where we're at now. And that people are not gonna spend all the things that y'all are wanting to see, sounds like y'all wanna see, this early for y'all to say no. You don't do that until you know you can do that use, and then you go to DRC. So it's just a lot of money to give you what you're wanting, sir. Smoke, odor, vibration, electrical interference, or other nuisances or hazards. The only other nuisance that I think people might be worried about from the scuttlebutt of some of the opposition might be environmental. And that's why we got this, my scientist here, and he can address any of those items. If somebody has any questions about what goes on from the water line out into the water. Solid waste, we'll have a solid waste container. Screening and buffering. <clears throat> we propose a buffer between us and the single family residence, six foot privacy fence. I can't remember all the exact, I mean it's canopy trees per hundred foot and understory trees and well, we'll meet that. I showed it on the site plan. Signs and lighting. We do. We want a monument sign out there with our logo on it. Nothing different than probably any other business out there. But I mean, we haven't paid to have somebody draw it up and get the permit because we want you know we want to get approved first. So I don't really have anything else on that. Same with the lighting. 
The site characteristics, I mean, it's almost perfect. It's 100 foot wide. We want 2,500 square foot building, 50 by 50, gives us 25 foot on either side. If we centered it up to buffer it from either neighbor that wanted the buffer, we'll work with it. We want to be good neighbors. In fact, we met with the board at Snug Harbor. <clears throat> we tried to meet with the board at Snug Harbor and talk to the president, but she didn't really, she, we saw in their minutes that they didn't really want to make a big deal of getting together a meeting because they have a lot of other issues supposedly going on Snug Harbor interior to the building from Sally, I think. Other use requirements, there are no other requirements. So we would like to get approved. Um, we're just asking to approve a use for a clubhouse and we're not asking for any of these other items that we didn't have to be here for like a restaurant or bar, indoor recreation, entertainment facilities, marinas, private, and commercial. There's the items that you could do here without coming here are crazy compared to having to do a conditional use to do a 2,500 square foot clubhouse. So I'd appreciate it if y'all would uh, accept our application and approve it. And after the opposition, or other people ask questions, we'd be like to respond to them. We thank you, sir. We have uh, several speakers, and uh, we, we may reserve to call you up uh, again. But in the meantime, does the board have any questions of the uh, applicant at this point? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, speakers, if you will be kind enough to limit your comments to three minutes, and if for any reason uh, you are for or against it, you, if someone in front of you has already spoken as to what you were going to say as relevant, then uh, just say, I'm for the conditional use or I'm against the conditional use. So you'll uh, come forward to the microphone as your name is called and be sworn in by the clerk. I believe I have this as Chris Thomas. You can raise your left hand. <laughs> Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So be gone. Yes. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I don't think this is compatible with our neighborhood. Um, I don't know the, the zoning laws, but uh, I, I think that a private use club, why, why would it be, a, why is he wanting it zoned for a private use club? Is it to circumvent some of the rules if it were commercial? I mean, is he going to have a, a turn lane on Gulf Beach Highway? I mean, traffic, you know, I live directly diagonally across, I'm at 10400 Gulf Beach Highway. So I'm literally right across the street. Um, sometimes I sit in my driveway for five minutes waiting to get out. You know, it's on a it's on a curb both both directions. He's talking about the the marinas that he mentioned. They're not on Gulf Beach Highway. They're off, like um, the yacht club. It's off of Gulf Beach Highway. Uh, the jet ski place is on Gulf Beach Highway. I don't know how they got that through. I guess it's because they didn't have to build anything. But uh, if you look at their their Facebook page, they do have alcohol at their meetings. Um, parking for 20, everybody else is just going to park in the grass. Come on now. It's, it's just not, it's, it's a neighborhood. You know, that, that's my neighborhood. That's where I live. If you guys approve this, you know, you're, you're done with it. You forgot about it in a couple of weeks. I'm going to have to live with this maybe until we move. You know, that's a building that's going to be there doing God knows what because it's, it's a private club. They can do whatever they want after you guys give them the approval. So I am, I am not for this at all, and that's all I have to say. Board members, any questions of the speaker? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Donald Bowden. That's me. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be God? I do. Thank you. I'm, I'm Donald Bowden. I'm the house you see adjacent to the uh, property, the gray house to the west. Uh, 
And I didn't come here, I'm not, uh, I'm not the opposition. Uh, I didn't come here to oppose you. I, I just came here for information because I'm, I'm gonna live next to it if, if it is built. Uh, and I guess, uh, Mr. Godwin, you, you brought up some of the questions I had. I mean, uh, there's a limited amount of space. You know, I, can, I understand there's, there's the possibility for you to expand your parking lot. Uh, if you're gonna expand it, will it be paved? Will it be concrete? Would it be aggregate? I mean, I would be opposed to aggregate because of the dust that it would, it would generate uh, if it's, uh, whether it be shells or the limestone or whatever. Um, but uh, additionally, uh, we're concerned that we can see it, but I can't really see it in relation to the other buildings. Uh, what's the setback on it? Uh, I mean, I'd like it to be equal to, I'm not asking for it to be back further than me, but I really wouldn't want it to obstruct my view. And then Mr. Hammond, if I think if I'm correct, you purchased a lot on the other side of me as well. I have a uh, on it, but and, it okay, all right. And if you ever built, I mean, obviously you wouldn't want it to, to you know, to block your view as, as well. Because we have a pretty, we're pretty blessed to have the view that we have. And uh, uh, the other thing, uh, as you mentioned, uh, you know, how do we keep, you know, I mean, it's a beach front, and I have access on the beach. Uh, you know, I mean, I say beach, you know, sound front. Uh, you know, people are people, and drunks are drunks, and I've, I mean, I drink myself. But, uh, you know, I mean, how do we do co crowd control if there are weddings and things like that? Those are my concerns. Uh, like I said, again, I'm not opposed, uh, but I'm, I'm concerned as, a, as, you know, a family living, living next door. Uh, and... Uh, the, yeah, the overflow parking, uh, how, do, how do we address that? Weddings, you know, I, you say the big international uh, billfish tournament isn't held there. That's, that's, I learned that now, now that I'm here. That was one of my concerns as to how many people, you know, are they going to be parking down the highway, parking in my yard? You know, will there be overflow people in my yard, you know, beaching up in front of my house in their boats and, and coming over? That, that, that's my concerns. And, and, uh, just as a homeowner, going to you know potentially living next to it. That's that's all I have. Board members, any questions of the speaker? Seeing none. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Pa Patricia Barker. Do you solemnly swear, from that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So be God. I do. Thank you, ma'am. I'm going to hand you these. These are my concerns. Let's see. Ho, 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 ho. What have you there? Um, what, is, what is this? These are my concerns. I was going to, instead of reading them all, you could have them. Okay. Um, Mr. Hammond needs to get this. Yes, we got to get them. We got to accept this as, you know. Okay. Okay. Let me, you want me to just read it first? Yeah. Okay. First of all, um, we really do not want it to go forward. I am talking for my parents. One is 92, he's got dementia, and the, my mother is 91 and she can't walk well. Our property is on the bottom of this. It's 10297, 10299, and 10301 Gulf Beach Highway. So we're very close to where we're talking about. Um, these are some of my concerns. My first concern is this, and maybe you can clarify this is that these gentlemen, one is the president and one is the treasurer, but they're also their own experts. Is that not a conflict for them to be their expert witnesses and to be members of the club that they're being experts for? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Let me make sure you got sworn. She, she did. Okay, okay, thank you. I mean, to me, I mean, I'm not a legal person, but is that not a conflict when you're saying you're an expert but it's also your own clubhouse that you're wanting to do that's just a question um my concern is basically more environmental because we do have waterfront right there um there's room for four boats and he just said that sometimes the boating is 20 boats coming in so if you look at the site plan, it shows that there's only room for four boats. These are large boats. They're not like pleasure boats that are out there, ski boats and that. I was, I born, 
raised out there. My parents fed this property, my grandpa since 1932. So yeah, we have seen how, what is progress. I have nothing against a clubhouse per se. What I have against is the impact that it's gonna have on the seagrass beds, the impact that um, if they're cleaning their fish out there, and that's attached to this, the FWC, they think of chum as remains from um, fish, like the bones, the guts, those type of thing, and they use that to attract sharks. If they have a cleaning station out there and they're throwing that into the lagoon, it's going to attract sharks. In my 66 years out there, I've literally swam across the other side, never have seen a shark. Not saying that there's not sharks out there. I'm sure there's sharks out there. But if you had that kind of refuge along your shoreline, first of all, the shoreline is my front yard. So if you have carcasses coming up, if you have the blood and guts coming up because they're cleaning their fish or whatever, and they're just throwing it in the water, then that's gonna present a major problem all along the shoreline there. And the mariners are there, we have, we have no problem with that. I don't know if they have their own dumping station or what that is. So if they're going to do this, and they are gonna have two billfish tournaments there. I was told they're gonna to have the junior one and they're gonna have the ladies billfish. So that's bringing in a lot of boats right there. So if they are gonna do that, could you conditional it that they have a dumping station for all the fish and everything that they're cleaning, that they don't dump it into the lagoon right there, that they have to you know, bring it offshore so it doesn't you know, affect the people that are living right along there. And again, our concern is about the parking also. Thank you very much. Uh, board members, any questions of the speaker? Thank you, ma'am. Are you Andrew? No, ma'am. Okay, I was going to thank Andrew. He thank you. actually answered we're, my phone call. We're, we're covering for him today, so okay. yeah, yeah. yes, ma'am. We'll let him know. Kevin Palo. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be God? I do. Thank you. I live at uh, Snug Harbor, and uh, most of my questions have been answered, and I'm neither for or against this. I just want some information. I noticed there was a buffer to the west. Is yes, that sir. correct? But there's no buffer to the east? Right. There was not one displayed on the current site plan. But it may be required at the time of the development review. Okay, um, that's such as a twelve foot buffer yeah, and those yeah. type of things. Yes, sir. Okay, that that was that was a concern. We're, we're, we're not quite there yet, um, but those yeah. things are addressed at the next level. You know, yeah. I, I I really like I said I I'm open minded about this and I really would like to see something like this in the area. But I know there's a lot of stringent rules that they have to follow. Um, so that that was my major concern and the parking is still a concern if they do in fact have weddings. I, I don't, I'm not that smart, but I think there's more than 18 people gonna be in a wedding. You know, I hope they can remedy that. That's, because I like to see it go in myself if it, all the stipulations are followed. Thank you. Thank you, and sir. Thank Any you for questions what you do. of the speaker board? Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Wes Barnes. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be God? I do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm a member of uh, Snug Harbor as well. I reside there. Um, I've got a couple of them that kind of bother me. At, we have rules and regulations there in the condo that we must live by. One of them is uh, that we have a quiet time from 10 p.m. to 8 in the morning. Uh, so we can't have uh, a bunch of drunken sailors, and trust me, I know a lot about that. I spent 22 years in the Navy, but uh, uh, we, we can't have a lot of noise coming from the place next door. That's, that's my problem. 
Uh, we do rent to the young Navy officers that are going through the flight program there in the condo, and they uh, at times forget that we have a quiet time from 10 to 8 in the morning, and uh, they have been remedied on that. But I, I would hate to see uh, a lot of noise coming from next door. That's my problem. Uh, we, uh, a lot of us are old. We're asleep by 10. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. Any questions of the speaker board members? Richard Barker, Jr. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Hope you God. I do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your service, all of you. I know these are difficult decisions to be made, but I certainly do appreciate you all um, having this hearing. I am opposed um, to, to the variance. I think the county commissioners, when they adopted the land development code, spent a lot of time in developing the code and deciding which is where. I think you had mentioned in agriculture this would have been allowed. It's not in this one, I think. There was a lot of discussion and conversation, consideration by both staff and members uh, what should be and what should not be in this area. And I think it would be a mistake uh, in order in, to make a, a variance of this type. Um, my sister who spoke before, Patricia Barker, um, I like a lot of her comments that she said according to the environmental but there are other areas and certainly i agree that the um, code enforcement would be called in but it's built then and so why cause the aggravation it seems like to me that the need is met um, they have a place now that they do the bill fish tournaments that he's talking about doing so it seems like that the needs met there's no need in, in providing a variance in, in, in this part in order to do this. So I appreciate y'all's time, and uh, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Board members, any questions of the speaker? Seeing none, we thank you, sir. Thank you. Are there any more speakers that we might have missed? Seeing none. Does the board have any questions of the applicant? Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry. I signed a speaker form. Um, sure. I wanted to be recognized as expert witness, and I wanted to offer in a rebuttal to some of the comments as it pertains to environmental issues. Yes. Very fine. Full transparency. I do serve on the board. I am a party to the applicant. So I, if you could just give me some deference on time, I'd appreciate it. Because there are a lot of points that the public has brought up and I wanted to be able to respond. But just to give you a background, Pensacola Big Game Fishing Club has been incorporated since 1970. We are a federal 5013C nonprofit organization. We've been a member of this community for 50 years. We want to be a good community partner. Last thing we want to do is do something to upset the local community. We donate most of our proceeds to charitable organizations, including the Backpack Project. We are the single largest donor to the Backpack Project. Scamby County's Backpack Project provides food to children. Uh, we provide to the Billfish Foundation. We provide to other charitable organizations as part of our overall goal. I want to talk briefly about the scale intensity of the operation. That's one of the criteria that's been brought up the most here. Uh, as Tom mentioned, we have two meetings per month. One is a board meeting, 15-member board meeting. Uh, that happens once a month, starts at 5.30, abruptly ends around 8 o'clock. We don't, like your board, we try to get done with board business as soon as possible. We immediately exit the building. The second meeting is a general membership meeting. On average, there may be 30 people at that meeting. We talk about club business. We talk about fishing, who's catching what, and um, we have just a general camaraderie. Those meetings are typically over by 9 o'clock at night. Uh, we currently hold them at Island Cove Marina. He's been gracious enough to offer his facility to us, but that facility is for sale. We have to find another venue to host our meetings. But again, uh, to address, um, uh, uh, I believe it's Kevin or, or Wes Barnes, to, to address Mr. Barnes, I too like to go to bed early. 
Uh, so <laughs> those meetings are generally over by 9, 10 at the latest. So that should address, and again, it's twice a month. Other than those two days a month, it's likely to be vacant, nobody there. Uh, uh, also, to speak about the tournaments, we do hold uh, three tournaments per year. We hold the International Billfish Tournament, which this year was our 50th anniversary. We held it at downtown Municipal Auditorium. That's a, a larger venue. We normally average about 40 boats, 300 anglers. That's a, a venue that we hold at downtown. Plus, we have spectators that want to come see uh, the fish at that tournament. We do hold two other tournaments. These are tournaments that we typically do for segments of the population that are generally not exposed to billfish tournaments per se. Those are our lady anglers. Uh, we've held a lady angler tournament uh, for uh, 41 years now consecutively. And we hold a juniors tournament uh, for junior anglers. It's 33 uh, years we've held the junior angler. This year's ladies tournament had 17 boats in it. This year's junior tournament had 20 boats in it. Talking about how we run a tournament. When we do a tournament, the people come in, they weigh their fish, we record that information, and then they leave. Not all 20 boats come to the docking facility and stay there and reside there. So they come in, they stay out in, in the water, and they don't come in all consecutively. People have fishing times and whatnot, and they come in, weigh their fish. So all we need is a very small area. It's not, the, the, the dock area that we have shown is not for permanent mooring. It's only for transient mooring. And it's only to accommodate those times when the vessel would come in, offload their catch. We would record the weight of that catch. They would then leave. But I also wanted to talk about carcasses. Since there was a discussion of carcasses, I would like to enter into an exhibit a copy of our rules. These are the rules that are published every year. This is the book that was published earlier this year. We've already held all of our tournaments. We've already held the international tournament. We've already held the junior tournament. And we've already held the ladies tournament. Same rules apply for all three tournaments. I would like to give this to the board with respect board, to board members, carcasses. So if you would accept this as an exhibit. Could we have a motion on that, admitting that as evidence? Mr. Chairman, I'll move that we accept it. We have a motion. We have a second. I'll second. Second by Marty. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Accepted oh, unanimously. <clears throat> and I'll give you just a moment, but while, while he's distributing it, we are a billfish club. Uh, the primary species that we target are pelagic species. They're, they're white marlin, blue marlin, sailfish, swordfish, tuna, dolphin, and wahoo. All of the billfish for the junior angler and the ladies angler are all catch and release. We don't allow anyone to, to kill billfish during the junior. And so all they're doing when they come in, they present a video to us. We verify the catch and then we allow them to be on their way and they give them a point system. We do have meat fish that are, that are caught during these tournaments, tuna, dolphin, wahoo, and swordfish. It's clearly stated in our rules, and I've highlighted this rule provision that says boats are responsible for removing all fish brought to the weigh-in. Our dock crew will return your catch to your boat. We don't allow any of our participants to clean fish during our events because it creates a nuisance. The small area that's shown on the site plan uh, that Tom has provided just to give you an idea of an early concept of what we're proposing to do is merely just a pavilion near the water, like a gazebo. That's not a fish cleaning station. Uh, so we're not going to have a fish cleaning station proximal to the water. That's not what we do. We're a civic club. Um, so I just wanted to bring this to your attention that during these tournaments, we require every one of the boat owners to remove their catch. We're not in the business of taking people's catch. All we're in the business of doing is recording the weight, the species, and the angler such that they may be eligible for a prize. And for the junior anglers, we give a scholarship every year to the top junior angler to help with their uh, educational requirements. Uh, also, to talk about there's, you know, fears of navigation, damage to the seagrass, damage to water quality. Uh, the dock is not an ask here. The dock is for, uh, the ask here is for a civic, civic club. As Caleb mentioned, uh, when the LDC was written, 
in my opinion, there wasn't a lot of thought put into it because civic clubs are only allowed to be in agriculture or RR. How much agriculture or RR zoning do you find on the water in Escambia County? I bet you you won't because it's not there. It's all north of, of Nine Mile Road. We are a water dependent organization. We have to be on the water to make it work. Just like Grand Lagoon Yacht Club, just like the Elks Lodge on Pensacola Beach, they really don't have to be on the water, but they are on the water, they're a civic organization. We are a Pensacola big game fishing club. We are a water dependent use. We have to be on the water. The zoning and the future land use is consistent with our proposed use. As Caleb mentioned, I don't know if Caleb did mention it, but a commercial marina would be a use that would not require any approval from this board. <coughs> Jet ski rental facility would be a use that would not have to come before your board. And in my opinion, there are several uses currently allowed by the current zoning and future land use that are much more intensive than what we're asking for that could be facilitated without any Agreed. deference to this board. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. You know, we talk about damage to seagrasses. If you'll notice, the dock is positioned out in the water. And, and also, using the waterfront of a parcel of property, it's a riparian right in the state of Florida. When you own property on the water, you have specific rights under the common law of Florida to utilize the riparian rights area of your property. It's a qualified right, meaning that you have to go to a regulatory agency to get a permit for that approval. The agency in this case would be the Florida Department of Environmental Protection or it would be the Department of the Army Corps of Engineers. Both of them have jurisdiction. When we go to those agencies, they will review exactly what we're doing and they will ensure that the facility is designed in a manner such that it won't cause impacts to seagrasses. Uh, it's located in depths that are sufficient that won't cause scour and the Corps will also review to make sure it will not cause any navigation concerns. We've already kind of provided a layout that meets all the state and federal setbacks. We've already provided a layout that is away from the seagrasses, so it terminates in areas that are devoid of seagrasses. There would be no mooring that would be allowed along the access portion of the pier that crosses seagrasses. Moreover, the dock would be constructed in accordance with dock construction guidelines over seagrasses, meaning the width couldn't exceed four feet. It would be elevated five foot above the mean high water line to allow light penetration, et cetera. Just telling you, there are mechanisms in place that protect the uh, seagrasses. Um, and I believe that really covers it from me. Um, I'd be happy to answer any further questions. Again, we wanna be a good community partner. We wanna do what's right for the community. Uh, I'll let Tom offer some rebuttal, but also to talk about the alcohol. We don't sell alcohol at our events. We're not allowed to sell alcohol at our events. Now, we may bring our own alcohol like any other fisherman may have in their cooler, but we don't sell alcohol. Um, that concludes my rebuttal. If you have any questions, be happy Thank to answer. Thank you, sir. Any questions of the speaker? Thank you. Tom, Thank you. you had a comment? Yes, sir. Thank you. That guy's a hard act to follow right there. Um, okay, I'm going to respond to some of the speakers that came up. So. I think his name is Chris Thomas. He brought, asked about a turn lane. We're not going to generate enough trips. I mean, that's an engineering deal, and there's a, you got to have a turn lane for Snug Harbor, but you don't have to have a turn lane for a 2,500-square-foot clubhouse if you go to the Institute of Traffic Engineers. It's just it's, there's not enough trips to require a turn lane. Uh, and he said something about some of these clubs or the mariners are not on the water. Grand Lagoon Yacht Club is definitely on Gulf Beach Highway and on the water, similar to our lot. And it's staying a half a mile. Same thing, exact same thing. Private club, it's a private club, just like we're trying to have one. Um, our next door neighbor, Donald Bowden, opposed the aggregate. Look, I'm not going, I can't sit here and promise unless y'all make an addition, we gotta have asphalt or concrete. You gotta remember we're a nonprofit. I mean, we get our money from tournaments and we get our money from membership dues. That's, that's where our money comes from, that's it. And we're all volunteers, so if it was a condition, then I guess we'd have to pay it. I mean, fortunately we got contractors that are in the big game club and that type of thing. We're, that's how we're trying to make this thing work out. So like the engineering services, there's not gonna be a charge and keys to scientist services are not gonna be a charge and we got a roofer and he's gonna put the roof on, not charge nothing but cost. So 
that's kind of how we're trying to make this happen after 50 years. Um, even with this building, we're not going to go. I would lay that building on probably on a direct line between Snug Harbor and the single family residence. So we're not blocking anybody and they're not blocking us for sure. Be glad to do that. Boats beaching. Okay, we can't, on the mean high water line side, we can't stop boats from beaching. That's like, if you can get access to the water, then you can walk down the water line on, as long as you're on the water side of the mean high water line anywhere. So, but I guarantee as our club, we're not going to be having people come up there and beach in their boats on our parcel, for sure. Um, Kevin Hollow, a buffer. Yes, we'll do a 12-foot buffer on the other side. We got 25 foot on either side if we put the clubhouse right in the middle of the lot. So we'll give Snow Harbor a buffer too. No problem. Um, I'm trying to make sure I got everybody. Mr. Barnes, quiet time. Yes, sir. We're we're usually out of there by 10 o'clock. I don't think we ever stay till 10 o'clock. Okay, let's talk about this. So there will be a Christmas party and there will be an annual award ceremony. In those situations, it might go a little bit. We we'll definitely work with Snug Harbor, let them know, do whatever we can to be good neighbors when we have a Christmas party. Christmas party might go past mid, uh, 10 o'clock. Not pulling any punches there. Um, Barker. One of the things I think Keith addressed most of their concerns, one of them was, are we asking for stormwater exemption? We absolutely are not asking for stormwater exemption. I got a swell, a pond showed on there that size for one inch, first one inch over the whole site. It'll meet the land development code. I already sized it. Um, again, we're not asking for a marina. Please keep your decision made on the clubhouse. We could have a marina there if we want to. I just got to go deal with these guys, not not go to get a special public hearing, which I hate when we have to go do a public hearing. I ain't going to lie to you. When we found this piece of property, I jumped all over it. It never occurred to me as a conditional use. And so we were like, had a contract and all that. And then I'm like, oh, my God, we got to have a freaking public hearing. Are you kidding me? Because I know how these things can go. So... You know, in reality, I don't, I've talked to them about it, and it might be something to go to the planning board, but not able to have a private clubhouse anywhere south of Nine Mile Road is kind of silly, no matter what your genre is, or whether you're a big game fishing club or Elk Lodge or whatever. So I think that's something kind of could be changed in the code, and I've talked to them about maybe going to the planning board and kind of looking at that. So that way you wouldn't have to be here if you want to have Elk Lodge or you want to have anything, whether it's on the water or not. You can't have one south of Nine Mile Road because there's no zoning for it that is allowed without a conditional use. So anyway, that uh, that's all I got. I would respectfully ask that y'all approve our request, and I appreciate y'all's service. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Uh, any any questions or comments to the speaker? And Mr. Smith, I would like to say something for the public. As you see, these um, these meetings they are recorded. They're quasi-judicial, and I'm gonna put Mr. Hammond on the spot. He made a lot of for sure, certainly. He made a lot of definitely that we're gonna not gonna do this and we shall. So if the board, it's for the public, if the board do approve of this, this meeting is in, is is forever in certainty. So if there's any things that they stated that they was going to do or the say that they was not going to do, you can basically get these documents and say, you said and proceed further. And I believe that they're going to do what they said they're going to do, but I just want to say for the public. That's why the purpose for having these meetings, quasi-judicial conditioning you so that if it is approved, those concerns you can keep, hold people accountable to what they said they're going to do. But again, Ms. I've been working with Mr. Johnson and Mr. Hammond for a good while. If they said they're going to do something, we're going to make sure that they do do it. If the board approves. I just want to say that for the... Yes, sir. Richard Barker, Jr. I've spoken before. Uh, I need to be re re sworn in. You're good. Okay. 
Thank you. And, and again, I appreciate your comments. Mm -hmm. I think that's very, very good. But um, I've been around for a little while in government for a while, and I have seen uh, same comments made, honest by staff, and, and staff is looking at today what happens. Uh, but I don't think there's going to be any restriction on him selling that property or the club selling that property, and you don't know what in the future may occur once the building's there. I think a lot of the comments that were made were very good uh, by both the, the applicants uh, for this and, and the members. The issue is they were speaking to a lot of things they could do anyhow, right? The billfish and the, and the dock and all that. That can be done anyhow. As I understand it, we're talking today about the variance of having a clubhouse. And that's what I'm opposed to. Certainly the man bought, brought the property uh, thinking, I guess, that he could have a clubhouse there. Uh, and he, he can't without a variance. And I'm just asking that the board hold to what the Land Development Code says and not grant a variance. And uh, um, like I said before, I think their needs are being met already. And if they're meeting such few times, there's facilities they can rent for what they want to do. Um, but I thank you again. I appreciate okay, thank it. Thank you. And we're limited on time, but you had a comment. Yes. Have you signed a blue sheet? No, I didn't. No, I'm sorry. We, we have to have that. Well, we'll get it. If you want him to speak, we'll get it. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it. Wait, we'll give it up to the board. And just for clarification, this is not a variance. No, not a variance. This is a conditional use, yes, which is limited to this particular entity. Yes, correct. So yes. if they were to sell the property to someone else, they, the conditional use would not transfer to another Absolutely. property owner. That's correct. And we've, we haven't had a piece of property for 50 years. We have no intentions of selling this property, believe me. Once we have our home, that's all we want is a home. Sir, did you want to complete the blue sheet? Oh, you're doing it? Excuse me? Yes, sir. If you come, come on speak, we'll, we'll get it filled in. Help them out with the time. Please My name is uh, Thomas Proventure. I'm a resident at Snow. Uh -huh. oh. Do you solemnly swear from that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, help you God? Thank you. Yes, I do. First, I got to tell you, I don't hear too well, so um, if you ask me questions, then you got to speak loud. My name is Thomas Proventure. I'm a um, resident at Snug Harbor. I'm here as a private citizen. I've listened to the testimony, and I think you know mo almost all of the bases have been covered. But this is a small organization. They only have three months. They only have three events a year to raise money. It occurs to me that they may be renting this place out to the general public or other organizations, and um, that increases the intensity of use. I haven't, I don't think that's been addressed by any of the uh, people seeking the uh, approval. I'd like to hear what they have to say. Tom, you want to address that? Absolutely. Make room at the podium, please. Tom, Tom, allow us to hear you too. Uh, he's going to address your comments, sir. Yes, he's, he's going to try to answer your question. Okay. We'll grab this. Okay, as I said earlier, this is just ideas that we're having as a club to generate money to help build this building, pay for this piece of property. Some of our ideas were, hey, maybe we can rent it out as event space. That's how that came up. That's why I'm, I put it in there. I mean, we're trying to be totally 100% transparent. I could have not put it in there, and it wouldn't have come up, and then we could have. Because those kind of uses... Probably allowed in commercial. I just don't want to go back to the commercial zoning look to start with all the uses, but so that's why that has come up. Um, yeah, I mean, if we could rent it out for a, a wedding or something and make three thousand dollars, well, absolutely, it's going to help us pay for the building, that kind of thing. If the, if there's some kind of temporary parking, you know, overflow parking, I covered that earlier. I know people keep bringing it up, but that's what the code says. The code says you got to have all weather surface for this many square foot for this use. That's 20 spots. 
And then all the rest of the land don't have to be improved, but it's absolutely welcome to be used by the people coming there to park on. It's just parking on grass. Um, so that is our thought process. If y'all want to put some kind of restriction on saying we can't, I don't want you to do that, but if we still get to build our building, then we're going to get approved, and then that's wonderful. But that's where that came from. It was just a thought process that we went through as a board of how we can generate income to help us pay for this. I'm going to tell you a little story about this. There's another reason why the board, the club, hadn't had, had it 50 years. It was because every time they went to a bank, they couldn't get all 15 board members to sign that note in case the club went defunct. So it's never been able to happen. Fortunately, we're blessed right now that one of our, our longest serving board member right now, he's going to develop it however he wants. But he's Gary Schluter. He's on our board. Gene's floor covering. He's like, you know what? I will. You don't have to get it to me. I'll buy it. And Tom and Keith, if y'all can't get it approved, then I'll build one of them other things in there so that's allowed in commercial. So that's how that happened. So I'm sorry I wasn't supposed to say that, but that's how we got the funding, and that's how we're able to do this for the first time in 50 years. So that's why we're trying to that, back to that rent. That's why. Rent it out, see if we can raise a little bit of income to help pay for it. Any questions, board? And, and I want to say, and if, and he just, since he said that it's a possibility, if there is concern about other uses that the bank may go in the club, the board can put a special project condition. Perhaps it may say something like this. Any other use, the parking criteria will have to be reviewed prior to any permission from this board for that use. That can be stated as a special project condition. It can be put on the development order for any other than what they, the general intent, if you want to listen, weddings or any other use that may require additional or more parking spaces, it has to be reviewed by the DRC prior to any permissions given. That is a special project condition that this board could make that we'll have to review it, and if it don't meet it, I'm sorry, they won't be able to do it, or they got to provide for those parking spaces. Since he stated that he would be willing to do that if that is a concern of the surrounding neighbors. I thank you, Mr. Mr. Hammond. Did I understand you to say that you would be willing to accept as a special condition that you would limit? Uh, you would not allow outside uh, use of the facility for a venue, for example, weddings, other kinds of things. Is Did I understand? I, I, do, I don't want that to happen, but if that's what it took to get approved, you're absolutely right. Yes, sir. And I want to have a clubhouse for Did I also understand you to say that you will be willing to buffer, I suppose, <laughs> most of your property, in other words, so that the condominium and the neighbor, the single family uh, home, own up so that you essentially will be entirely uh, cut off from the, in other words, you'll be insulated or they'll be insulated uh, from your facility. Did I? Yes, Is sir, we are required by the code right now to to buffer from the single family residence and we're going to do that and if it, it if that we all want to make the condition we got a buffer i'm already offering it we're going to buffer the same way on the other side but yeah in other words every area that needs uh buffering is going to be closed off so that you will be essentially uh not visible from the other yeah, the, the, the buffer requirements is a bunch of vegetation and a six-foot fence. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to meet with them if this gets approved right. and see if we can get away from the fence. fence is really expensive every time you get a storm surge and you knock it down. But right. if, that's, if that's what the code requires and I can't get our neighbors to agree to, then we're going to have a six-foot privacy fence down both sides and all the landscaping that's required by the LDC today. Yes, and sir. The, the, the code does require, just to reiterate, it does require the 12-foot buffering uh, supplement it with a six foot fence. I would just say with that requirement on the east side, now 
I know the engineering is not fully done yet, but the stormwater requirements may supersede that. I would just say if something such as that is approved today, that there's some lenience to that stormwater pond being more important to the well, fence than anything else. Because the buffering may be need to be smaller in that area. It, it's just there needs to be a little bit of w wiggle room there. I can make well, what about yeah, natural? Yeah, you're right. I just want to make, and Mr. Hammond is more than enough familiar with all those requirements. It's just a little bit, I know if we're going that route, then I just want to make note of that. What about natural buffing like trees, I don't trees, think there's, there's not anything on it right now. There's, there's no um, vegetation on the property. Well, that, right that's now. what I'm thinking of. If you can't have a conventional it. fence, then you, and I don't mean, you know, oaks, saplings, I mean trees and hedges and that sort of thing. Uh, and also, uh, the parking itself, uh, how much overflow parking do you estimate that you've got? I'd say there's, I would say you can see the length of that parking lot and there's more room than that between there and the right of way. So what, one and a half times more? So what, 50 parking spots maybe? Okay. And will you make a commitment as a part of, should the board approve your application, that there be uh, lighting that is uh, downward and non, that doesn't intrude on the surrounding neighbors? Absolutely. Uh, yes, sir. And I don't, you know, not big poles. I mean, I've, we've had a project come before us proposed before where they use these little baryard looking lights of those sorts of things. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm, that's all I have. Okay. Uh, have. Mr. Johnson, did yeah, you have? I wanted to just say one more thing. All right, one thing. Let's make sure whatever you are requiring us to do is in this motion. Right. Please. Yeah. So, Caleb, based on the existing zoning and the future land use, yes, sir. Could could the property be developed to hold event space? So, could we build a building and rent it out for event space? Right. Under well, is under the current zoning and land, it's use? essentially the Airbnb. Yeah. You know, we allow for a single family home. You know, there's nothing on provisions that would otherwise say that. You can't utilize that for some type of rental. So the, we don't have anything that says as long as it's compliant with the, you know, the, the LDC, the LDC, then it would otherwise be allowed. So board, I'm just reiterating under the current zoning and land use, the uses that you're, you're asking about are allowable under the current use. The conditional use application is just for the civic club use of the property only. So I'm asking, begging you to only consider that as a lot of these uses that everyone's concerned with is allowable under the current zoning and land use. But in order to get your application approved, this board, if, well, at least it's my understanding, we have the authority to attach I understand. conditions. I'm just are, making, you, are you rejecting? I'm making, no, are, sir. I'm making, the, the, making you aware that th these are uses that are allowed without conditional use. These are uses that are allowed under the current zoning and, and future land use. Well, I guess what I'm getting at is, do you re are you rejecting then the suggestions that we just discussed? I would, I would rather the board make a decision on the civic club use of the property and, and, and not our ability to rent it out as a venue. But again, if, if it's a complete deal breaker, then obviously we're at the mercy of the board. I'm just making the board aware that these are uses that are currently allowed under the future land use and zoning. Horace, I have a question. Um, since we're stuck on this whole event venue thing, right. there are things, there are rules bigger than us, uh, such as um, fire department and other things that say thou yes. shalt not have a thousand people in yes, a absolutely. ten square foot building. Absolutely. Um, so those would be in effect regardless of of what they decide to do there. If they absolutely. wanted to have a Christmas party and it was for 500 people, if fire department absolutely. rules and other yes, yes, absolutely. regulations would prevent such things. Absolutely. absolutely. Okay. 
Um, and, 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 and that's why I'm, that's why I stated that if there's some concern of, if there's some other, if there's some events that is questionable, we just make that criteria, not that you're going to stop it, but you just, Hey, be concerned that your parking, what this event may not meet all of the adequate parking concerns, please make adjustments just to make them aware so that it can be reviewed because we have had challenges with events. But that staff will look at it. We don't want to stop you. Just you make sure you map the limit on. And, and they can control that through what they're offering through the limitations, through their own rules and procedures. On that, but we just want to make it so that to put them on notice. Please be concerned because this is a, a concern that was raised. But being That's because something. this is a private club, they don't, they aren't, um, they're still required to follow those rules. Yes, they are. So it, it's the, the quote private club issue is. Yeah. Here, okay. Yeah, yeah. Remember, we, we want to be good neighbors. If yes. we were going to have an event, first thing we're going to do is contact Snub Harbor and my, and the, my neighbor on the other side. Yeah. That's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to restrict it. Like if somebody, we want to have 250 people here for a reception. We're like, we can't do that here. I mean, we're, it's our facility. Yes, they own it and they're responsible for it. And county regulations, you know, if they have an event that's going to go for a certain amount of time and they know that they're going to have some type of, you know, loud, they have to apply to the building department for those type of waivers and get, they have to seek approval for those things. The, uh, the parking, there's overflow parking provisions that are allowed during se seasonal uses, um, not necessarily for, it doesn't specify Christmas parties, but it specifies holiday sales yes. um retail sales and so um i would think it'd be similar or something like that outcast bait and tackle fish um t sell in march they had to get a permit for all that extra parking i mean there's provisions to address all this we're not i have we have no intention of doing that now, this is just my hobby i do this and deal with them every day on projects up here all the time i'm gonna be a good neighbor here at the county and we're gonna be a good neighbor out there at the big game club with our neighbors out there I would ask that the motion be everything you asked for, the buffers, all that, minus this event thing. We don't know we're even going to have events, but we don't want to restrict ourselves from doing something on the property that it can currently can happen on that property today without coming to this board. Thanks. Can I see the, the uh, photo um, between Snug Harbor and the subject property? We were talking about buffering, and I just wanted to kind of see what it looks like currently. It's, it's fairly blank. You know, there's not much, not much there, but it's basically spots. It's not much there. Yeah, it's blank. Yeah, it's blank. Yeah, it's blank. And the property line is kind of where those uh, trees are. Yeah, you can see the single family there on the right-hand side of the photo, and of course, the left is Snug Harbor. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, those trees are pretty much the property line. The yeah. ones on the left and the ones on the right next to the gray house, that's pretty much the property line. Yeah. I would say on the left, the... Sir, you're going to make comments because it's being recorded? That's yeah. if the board wants to address yeah. that? I, mean, I, I live there, so I mean, it's, yeah, I, I'll kind of point it out. The, the left side of these trees right here is pretty much the property line, and this is the property line. These, these uh, power poles and the trees are give or take. Yeah, you can see, actually, see the survey flag right there. Uh, all the way down to the water. Yeah. And then on the top, the same thing. Uh, not, not the right side of the trees. There's kind of a cluster of trees, but the left side is uh, pretty much the property line. So then. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Would you go back to the zoning map, please? Help me understand. Um, why the current zoning is commercial and there's residential structures on in that area so the commercial zoning does allow for residential uses um and the allowance is is only there if the future land use is compatible being the future land use of mixed use suburban the zoning of commercial still allows for any residential use and that's any, not just single family, two family, allow for multifamily as Would well. you say that again, please? The commercial zoning 
in conjunction with the future land use of mixed use urban does allow for any residential use on the property okay thank you yes sir um would you would you go back to the um uh, criteria criterium page please and, and one thing on that too in, in that map uh prior to ivan both of those lots had homes on them there were there were two on the one on the left of me and on the right there were three on on that part you know single family homes <laughs> I'm just a bit confused about the criteria. Um, which one um, is ca is causing this issue? Nuisance. Is, is the nuisance? Yeah. The okay. Uh, scale, intensity, and operation. Okay. And, and I do want I do want to say this. Not trying to. I I just like for you all to have all of the all of the information. Again, and it has been stated and, and and that commercial zoning, that commercial zoning which is go back to that zoning map, please. That commercial zoning on that side of the Guppish Highway, there are some more intense uses that are permitted. And Mr. Jones, we do have an avoided expired development order yes. for this property yes. that the applicant did mention and we did research that previously there was an 11 story condo that was approved for this lot. Yes, so, so that's, that's, that's that, that, so that's why we need to be trying to stay focused on those uses, the zoning, commercial, unfortunately, and the houses are there and, you, and we wanna respect that. But much more intense uses can go there without this board even being considered, so I just want I, I just want to state that for the record. And then, if there are nuisances with those permitted uses, the only foreseeable option is to respectfully contact code enforcement. And code enforcement do have a lot of authority; they have a lot of power where they can make things get better or get removed. They do have that authority per the law that they already have on the books. Ms. Jones, I'd like to be able to feel better about the parking. Yes, sir. The uh, criterion says that it meets it, but we've got testimony that it may uh, have events that can <laughs> attract more than 50 people. What? This, again, as I stated, this board do have the option. If that is a concern, this board do have the option to make a special project condition indicating that any other venues or any other events that may trigger or that shall trigger additional parking demands or, 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 or more than normal, that they got to come to, through, to us to review and to look at, to ascertain, to make sure there's enough adequate parking spaces or they have to make accommodations for it or they right. have to not do the event. That is, we could put that in so mm -hmm. that can give you the comfort level, that can put them on notice, that can help with the, and in, they indicate that they're gonna contact or reach out to the neighbors anyway, so that just make them, that yes, not just if they want to or not, right. this would be, they must, and then if they, if, if they violate that, and if, and, and if there is, respectfully, if there is something where they, that they did not meet that special project condition, again, there is some latitude that the county has for not meeting those special project conditions. Again, not trying to stop them from having it, but, but to, so that they can be concerned that this could potential have more adverse impacts on the neighbors and, and you'd be aware of what you're gonna to do to accommodate and address it. That's what, that's what we can do the, to help and the board have that authority to do that if that can give you more of a comfort level for the protection of the surrounding community. But the parking is going to be addressed. Yes, the parking, for the, that, for, the parking for that particular use, for this particular use, it will be addressed. 
That's if they want to, the event, and that's what they say they want to have. Mm -hmm. On those special events that they maybe want to do only, because the parking for that clubhouse definitely will be addressed. They got to do that. Right, and, and again, the, the code does address that. It, it gets into, you know, if you do have that overflow, which is allowed, um, the code doesn't want you to build a parking lot for something that you are going to use for twice a year. Um, it allows that. There's some provisions there. Um, regardless, the provisions still state that the geometry and all those things must be met to allow for accommodating of individual vehicles, X, Y, Z. So, uh, and the code doesn't allow, these things work together. The code doesn't allow parking in the right of way and all those things, Absolutely. you know, that's when you get in the code enforcement stuff. Yes. So it kind of, it kind of works together with other regulations um, to, to make sure all those things are accommodated. Board members, do you have any questions of the applicant? Seeing none, board members, do you have any questions of staff? Seeing none, the chair will now entertain a motion regarding this item. In your motion, please state whether or not you adopt staff's findings of fact. If for any reason you do not accept staff's findings of fact, please go through all the criteria and address each one specifically as to why you do not concur. Do we have a motion? I'd like to move that we approve the conditional use and agree with the staff's findings of fact. We have a motion, do we have a second? I would like to add to the motion to put that buffer on the east side, similar to that which is on the west. I agree. We have a motion. We have an, a second as amended. I'd also like to offer an amendment that the parking uh, that in the, the county make it clear that uh, that uh, the parking must meet the requirements of the code uh, and that any violations uh, will be prosecuted by the county, I suppose, or cited by the county. I'm not sure if that needs to be an amendment because that's already going to happen. I think that's also going to be discussed with the DRC. And the concerns such as inward and not affecting the parking I could speak for the exterior light. That is a requirement, and that that plan is to be submitted at, at the next level. That is definitely required, everything that was noted about the lighting. You want to hold with your uh, amendment or? No, your... Mr. Chairman, I'll withdraw it. I guess we're at the point where we need to okay. decide have... on what we want to do. We have a motion with one amendment, which was accept, accepted by the motion maker. And I want to make sure, and that's, and that's, the, that, that's just with the buffering on all sides. I want to be clear with the motion. And we, we would certainly notice staff, um, the concerns, and Absolutely. we always try to do our best job, but we will make sure that all those things are, are definitely met at the time of review. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I'd, I'd like to um, just discuss for a moment and get the board's feeling um, on restricting uh, rental uh, of this property. Um, I'm not sure <laughs> at this moment whether I'm for it or against it. I know there, I understand the impact it would have on the owner of, if we were to restrict um, use to, to only uh, clubhouse uh, activities and and not rent to outside groups um, 
I, I understand that they'd like that money uh, to help pay their bills, but I also understand, I also believe that um, rentals of that property um, could get out of hand and that would disrupt um, the local um, residents. So I'd, I'd like to discuss that with the board um, and get a feeling for it. I'm, I'm not at this point willing to um, recommend a modification of the um, motion, but I, I'd like to hear what the board has to say. I have no problem with the um, organization renting property. Um, I would assume that with the the space that they've got, no one's going to rent the property if they can't fit their entire group in there. So, right. you know, if you've got a bunch of little old ladies who want to go play bridge, you know, I'd hate for them to to have oh, to right. be restricted by this. I mean, we could think of a million different right. scenarios of what they could rent what for and what they couldn't rent for. And to restrict them specifically for no rentals, I think, is a is too much. Do we know approximately uh, how many people the facility would be able to accommodate? I, yeah. That sort of backs back into my parking. Yeah, and, and the code per the parking, it, it says um, you're supposed to have uh, one, I believe, Tom, it was a three per thousand square foot or, or one per three members. That's what it was for a lodge. It says that you have to have one parking space per three members. But back to you, how many people can actually go in there, that is going to get into the specifications of the fire code. Uh, um, that's going to be back to, you know, circling the wagon, back to some of those building code requirements that is going to be limited by that number. I'm unfamiliar with that number right off the top of my head, um, but that otherwise will be limited by that. That would be inside the building? Yeah, no correct. No restrictions outside the building? Uh, no, that, not that I would be aware of that there would be, uh, you know, you get into the mass congregations of people, you, you may get into some stuff like that, um, but not necessarily in our land development, um, yeah, we just an assembly. Right. You know. We just regulate the, the parking. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only thing that is the our land development code requires is the parking as far as on the outside. And, and certain types of uses are different. But outside, you could conceivably have hundreds or more easily. But you, you know, if I'm invited to a party with hundreds of people and there's no parking, I'm not going to the party. Yeah. And I'm certainly not going to park on Gulf Beach Highway. So I think, I think the amount of people coming to any venue that they have is going to be limited. So I would think the less parking spots, the better, because no one's going to come if they can't find a parking spot. And this is the thing, and this is the thing. And, and even, and yes, we could, if people do park on the right of way, that, if, if, the, if the law, if that's not the law, they're the one breaking the law. And hopefully the, the club will make sure that you don't support it. But it, sometimes you cannot control all types of behavior. Because pe I'm, I, and I'm, because people park on, I, although, yes, no, it's definitely not legal. That's why it would be the club responsibility to ensure that they try to get people not to do that. But this board cannot control that type of behavior by parking on the right way if it's not if it's not the law. I, I think uh, this body needs to be cognizant of the private property rights, and I I hate to see telling an owner they can't rent something out to somebody, that's, uh, that's uh, getting uh, close to violating private property And, and just realize, to, to, to get into that, and not per se these facilities would be rented, just realize the permanent uses in this commercial zoning district uh, um, allow for uh, skating rinks, um, you know, bingo halls, movie theaters, um, things such as that. So. Um, Right, so that mass gathering of people may exceed, those uses may exceed um, what is being proposed here. Did that help with your? That did. It did? Okay, uh, board members, we have a motion. We have an amended second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, those in favor signify by raising your right hand. 
passes unanimously. Conditional use is granted. Let's take a five minute break, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> For your thoughts there, that really helped clarify. Oh. I, I hadn't gotten to that. I, I hadn't gotten to the point where the facilities will restrict some of their rentals. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. Okay, maybe this one will go. Uh. <laughs> we could um, have staff provide um, their criteria in written form 
so we can leaf through it um, as opposed to asking them to pull up the, the document or, or pull, pull it up. They're probably doing it to phone. save paper. Yeah. Because I think they used to provide the documents and then now it's all electronic. You, you're talking about this? Yeah. Uh, the criteria, the eight criteria. Um, and when, when there's conversation going on, Cover yourself. Tuesday at 1047 a.m. Yes. Say so this email, and if you have it, it's not, yes. you need to. We'll talk about it later. Okay. We got it. Yeah. Okay. We got it. Here we go again. That's all for one case. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Iris. Hush your mouth. Okay, let's uh, re reconvene. Board members, we're next addressing variance 2021-06, 16283 Narwhal Drive. Board members, has there been any ex parte communication regarding this case? Seeing none, does anyone have any knowledge or information obtained from a site visit or other sources? Seeing none, does any board member intend to refrain from voting due to a voting conflict of interest? Seeing none, would the individuals who are a party to this item please come to the podium, identify yourself, State your name and address for the record and be sworn in by the clerk. Do you solemnly swear, friend, that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Yeah, I'm uh, Joe Firiati, and I live at 16283 Narwhal Drive in uh, Russell Bayou on Interarity Island. And were you provided with a staff's findings of fact? Uh, yes, sir. Would you like to address address those findings yeah do you have the uh, uh any slides you can put up on the screen for the board? to show the property yes can you put my uh, plot plan up there yeah that's it yeah that's fine right there okay you can see um that my residence on the on the plan site plan yeah, that shows the house there, and that shows the proposed deck. You can see when they, when the developers laid out my lot, I feel that they kind of cut me short. You can see where the lot on the, the left extends way back, and then they, for some reason, they brought it straight forward, and then you know cut it off, as I'm saying. Whereas I feel they should have probably squared it off or rectangled it off in the back because. I don't know if you've got any pictures that were taken, but if you could show a picture of, of this. All right, here we go right here. And you can see how that was angled. I don't know if you can see the marker, but I feel the property line, if it went all the way back, I wouldn't even be here discussing how I'm gonna build this deck. What, what I property, the cement marker right there by the little uh, reflector, okay? I'm gonna come up. I would like to come up to within a foot or two of that to meet my 15 this way and 30 that way over towards the kayaks. I just want to build a big deck, composite wood. Uh, I'm going to go with the aluminum coated uh, handrails there, and I'm just going to I'm going to raise it up. You know, it, on the back side of it's going to be about three feet off the ground because I want to store the kayaks under there for one to hide them for for the residents. 
And then I also uh, did that because in Hurricane Sally, the water came up to the bottom landing anyway, so I want to go a step above that for future hurricanes or whatever. So I feel that uh, this project is going to look really good. It's going to improve in my backyard. Right now, um, you, you can see the hickory. It was a beautiful hickory tree that Sally took, took out during, during the uh, last hurricane event. And uh, it, it knocked it over and clipped the side of, uh, of our, our property. I'm going I'm to clean all that up. And I'm going to sod around this whole thing. I'm going to put my wife's garden back there. I'm, I'm going to make it look good, OK? And, and the point I was trying to make is I don't see how I'm going to impede on anybody but a raccoon or a deer or a fox that runs through this trail, OK, if I build my deck up to that concrete, just in that little portion there, you know, for, for this proposed project. I, I don't see what the big problem is. Now, I, could, I understand the rule, five-foot rule. If I lived in my, own, my old residence at uh, 515 Batten Boulevard in Emerald Shores, which this last case meeting, you know, I was really interested in that one because I, you know, I've dropped, drove down Gulf Beach Highway a thousand times. It's probably one of the most beautiful drives in this county, all right? And I think that their, their uh, fishing uh, club is a, really an improvement for, for that area. I, I would be all for that. So um, I, I, I don't see, you know, why I can't uh, get this. Okay, let's let the staff yeah. make a presentation. If you'll just sit for a moment, please. Okay, appreciate it. So yes, um, again, Cale McCarty, Planner, Scammy County. Um, first map we have here is our location map showing the property in question. Um, we have a 500 foot radius zoning map. The property is low density residential. Then we have the future land use map. It is mixed use suburban. And an aerial showing the house. Um, just a note, the house was um, built just recently to 2020 uh, this is our public hearing sign and this is looking onto the site and the applicant uh, demonstrated the you know the proposed deck would go in this area um, that concludes our yes sir could you use your, your cursor and uh, outline it just again on the picture where uh, where the deck I think we're just looking directly at it, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, sir? Yeah, that string line is, is going to be just like he's pointing there. And then I don't have a string line that's going to go on straight, the rear, so. Right towards the kayak. Right? And I believe that brush line back there um, would essentially be where the property line would lie. Um, and it would, that would be where it's in question. That, that middle right corner of the photo is um, about yeah, where we were talking. You would not go, would not go that far back. Okay. The string line You said you would be about a foot off of the trail? Uh, at least. I'll be no, I'll be, yeah, I'll be way off the trail. The trail is even farther back from my uh, concrete marker there. I will be, I will stay up at least a foot off of that concrete marker. Uh, Mark. Yeah. Flat of this. Of course, I'm in the case of the correspondence. And actually, you can see it probably on yeah. the, I think I drew Just it out on that one trail in the conservation. On that one drawing, right? I actually drew it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's good. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's a better angle. Yeah. yeah. So there's the string there. But then straight across yeah. the other uh, stick. Yeah. Do now begin the cursor. Right there, yes, sir. Okay. And just another place to, you know, hang out in the shade, be in nature. I mean, it's a beautiful area. Some marsh back there. Water view. Would you go back to the site plan? Yes. There it is. That's how I grew it out on that deck. Your property line a bit with that deck. is on there you go. the near side of the trail, correct? Yeah, OK. Actually, my property goes through the and trail. Goes through and it so does piece. my neighbor to the left of me, uh, Fred and Jackie. And again, for some reason, they cut it off. And then my neighbor to the right of me, the bushes, 
they don't have this problem at all because their theirs is basically cut short all the way down the trail. Which the, the nature trail is great. People you know walk through there, walk your dogs, go down to the tennis court, come down to the bayou. It's it's no big deal. We who do, who does the trail belong to? It's the association, the Russell Bayou Association. Okay. Yes, sir, and we do have a copy in our correspondence, we can display it if you like, of the plat for Russell Bayou and showing the associated lots and um, backing up to that, I guess, common area, conservation type area. It is, even though the common area technically runs through my lot, that's why I made the, the mm -hmm. joke that, you know, my wife's a Filipino and she'd like to put a pig pen there if this gets to the <laughs> That's just a joke. But you do have a letter from the association. You do have a letter from the association yes, saying we would love for you to do the project because it would improve the back of the property. And the staff, the issue is the yep. setback? We, yeah, we don't have a mechanism that would otherwise, and we run into this all the time. Um, when you get into less than five feet, um, you, you really get into that, you know, into the other person's space type of deal. You get into those questionable, where's the property line? So we don't really have a mechanism besides, you know, administrative variance, get them 20%. We don't have a mechanism to get them down to one foot. Um, that's why we're here today. Um, we did, and just to recap our findings, um, we didn't find it necessarily injurious to, you know, due to the fact it's backing up to a nature type trail area. We didn't find it injurious or anything to the um, associated property that may be affected. So, um, you know, it's just unfortunate we just don't have a mechanism besides coming to the board. Yeah. And the, the uh, like you were saying, the, uh, uh, the question is uh, that it does get near the next landowner. And is that landowner the homeowners association? Absolutely. That's what it appears to be. That common area of Russell Bayou is owned and managed by that homeowners association. As you can see so, from the aerial, that back portion back there. There's some wetlands and stuff back right. there. Um, so typically when this thing was platted, all those kind of get protected and, you know, um, those type of things. So we don't have any neighbors uh, that are in any way uh, complaining about this or any, is that right, sir? No neighbors at all, no, sir. Uh, no but this is, this right. is what I do want to say. What variance got to be, is it is it mm -hmm. is it a hardship? Is it right. necessary? Is it is it just because a request? Which y'all know the criteria. Y'all have y'all have made decisions based upon those things. Mm -hmm. So we got to be very very careful that we st that, that we try to stay with the with the precedence that is set, and also to when you start getting that close to the property line, one feet. Believe me, there are some problems that could occur regardless if they regardless if they want to. Do that because that's, that, that's one free. It could be rainwater, and rainwater start going next door, and then they'll be saying, "Me, well, okay, well, he, for example, he got the deck, but now the deck is 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 having rainwater from his property going into now we having impacts to the wetland areas and all of those things. That's why that five foot requirement. Basically, one foot is sort of that's that's close, and we and I've and I've been doing it for well, twenty years. I have seen. I get what you. a one foot from the property line, what it can do to the adjacent property, regardless if they agreed to do it or not. So I just want him to be aware of what would happen, what could happen, and what he might have to deal with if the homeowners go defunct and somebody doesn't want to buy the property, and, and here we go. So you got one foot of the property line, and he caused impact. So that's, that's, that's why staff cannot really, really say that the, the criteria is met at this time because it's not really, really a hardship. Well, what would two land. feet do? Same? Let me, well, it's, it's probably less than one. It's, it's, less, than it's, it's less than one, so, so you have a distance. I, I just want to interrupt right there now that you mentioned two feet. Yeah. I don't think it actually is one foot where I laid that out. I, I could go two feet from that line. Easy, very easy. And, uh, the, the foot as uh, applied is that. kind of where you're most extensive. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. as we If I took a, a string line from that concrete marker, or if I would have run that last string line to square it off and, and took a measurement from that concrete over, I think I am two feet, but I could make it for sure two feet. Right. And then as far as any rainwater, that is a valid point coming in off the deck. You know, I'm, I'm going to sod that area. Right now it gets to be a mess with no really veg vegetation. 
vegetation, and I can add a little swale to you know direct water away from my neighbors. Absolutely. Not there was a discussion on um, the shape of the lot line um, in in the rear of the property. The you said there are wetlands. Um, yeah. Are they abutting this property line, or are they? Do you I think know? they're in it, but uh, the, the wetland science people. I actually had to get a, a survey from the company that was here in, in the last case, and the, they they approved uh, everything. I did a survey with uh, wetlands. So, you know, I'm never going to do nothing with that way back. And and this deck does not impede with that marsh by any way. So, uh, I'm so any sure water would make its exactly. way into the wetlands. Is that right? So here's the, um, as it's platted for Russell Bayou, um, and Rachel zooming in, that is lot two um, that backs up to that common area E um, that's all private. Um, and as you can see, if you scroll out just a little bit, Rachel, um, you see there is a nature trail that the gentleman is referring to and those type of things. So uh, again, we just don't have anything that we can hang our hat on concerning hardship for the associated property. Um, and then even well, let's see, Water pump, but let, well, what if? Because I got I got a big problem going on right now, so I'm, I'm more cognizant of these issues. Sediment, red dirt, those things. If you start infiltrating into that, then he would definitely be responsible if red dirt get into to that. And that's you know, but you don't want to have to deal with that when it comes to jurisdictional yeah, yeah. wetlands. It's so just want to let you know. The only red dirt things, was yeah. when they laid the house out. Yeah. And if you can go back to that one picture. That you had the, uh, you could see the string line real good. That last slide you there, yeah, that right there. You see, I, I, I added a retaining wall because the, you could literally see the footers when uh, Doug Fort, uh, I don't know if you know them, I did Fort Home Builders. <coughs> they, they were the one that built the house, okay. and uh, I didn't like the way that was going to erode eventually. So I added gutters around the house as part of the project, which wasn't in it originally, and then I added this retaining wall because of that runoff. Yeah. And you know, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to, to meet whatever, you know, runoff. Yeah. Only thing is when they, when they were backfilling the dirt into that retaining wall, they hit it with some equipment and bent a couple of oh. That <laughs> make me very happy. Uh -huh. It's not very great square right now. So how big is the deck? Again, 30 I'm feet by? Fit, I would like to do a 15 by 30. And you're two feet off? Two feet off. I could say Could you do a 12 off. foot by 30? Uh, 12 foot which direction? So. 12 foot wide. And then that way you'd have your five feet. Yeah, I just don't think it's big enough for 12 feet. I'd just rather not do it at all. Same you're building off existing stairs that are there, I do right? I want to do it big. That's existing yeah. stairs, right? Um, yes, all that's going on. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of in play there. I think the 15 will still all be two feet off there, if you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. 15 foot deck. And I could, I could bring it back towards the house more too, but you can see I've already got that grass there that I planted. It's going to kind of butt up against that. And, and for the board, we, we do have provisions that do allow some minimal encroachments into required yard setbacks, like 24 inches of building features, you know, overhang steps, uh, porches. Mm -hmm. uh, those type, due to the fact that it's one foot, that's the crucial thing. It, we don't have anything to get him there. Would 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 you go back to um, the previous um, map that I think showed uh, um, flood lines? There we go. Oh, is that it? No. Oh, there it is. I see a flood zone. Yeah, um, this is in flood zone AE, this, all this property is. It's in a flood zone. Yes, sir. Yeah, the, but the flood zone is, is the crosshatched area, correct? No, no, I don't think it's depicted it's here. It's the one with the little grass. Uh, what tide I'm affected wetlands. Yeah. With a little grass oh there. yeah so on the property itself that that hatched area that you see is the common area the grass patches 
right in the middle. Those are the wetlands. Okay. Those are the wetlands. And what I'm getting at is, would this deck be in the flood zone? It, yes, all this property is in a flood zone. It wouldn't be in the wetlands. I understand that. that. Yeah. I, what I'm getting at is, does code allow any construction in a flood zone? Oh, certainly. This gentleman built his house last year. It requires flood elevation certifications, um, things like that. However, a deck um, wouldn't, and I'm not a floodplain manager, but it wouldn't, wouldn't cross that threshold to require okay. um, certain things. Now, that's reviewed at the building permit process. You know, if he's got to come up or X, Y, Z, you know, running electricals, lights, and all those things are covered at the building department um, process. But of my knowledge, it wouldn't require anything special on our side. Okay, thank you. At this time, yes. That was one question I had was, uh, did you purchase the home already built or did you have it built? Uh, no, I bought the lot back in 2014, and then, you know, we took a while to uh, plan <coughs> one of the build, and then uh, we just had it built in uh, 2020. Okay, so you yeah, had it built based on yeah. Yeah, the previous build. lot lines and so forth? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Would you take us back to um, the photographs? The deck, I mean, the deck could be pushed back closer to the house. I'd like to uh, just bring it up to where you see I got that sod cut off yeah. right there. That's where I'd like to lay it. And then 15 feet from where you have the cursor there going this way. And I think that'll put me two feet off of that concrete, you know, what we're debating here, the, the, the property line. Just on this edge, or halfway, about halfway across the deck, really. Because again, from that that concrete marker, it juts, my property juts out over the end of the trail. Right. I don't know why they laid it out like that, but it is what it is. And I've been trying to think of other configurations to build the deck, but I, I just wanted to look right. Maybe some sort of trapezoid or something. I don't know. But I just wanted to place to store my kayaks. And I'm not going to put the aluminum handrails all the way around the deck. I'm going to leave this part where you see the sod uh, cut. I'm going to leave that open. I'm not going to put handrails there because it's not a requirement for handrails anything above three feet, right? Uh, the, the, the back, the, the deck will be level once you get to the, the back side by the trail. You know, you're going to be up three feet and I will require a handrail at that point. So. Is that white sand that you see there, is that the actual trail? That actually is, yeah. It was grass at one That's time. That's the trail? And, and then Sally put a good uh, inch of sand back there. Had a little beach going there for a while after Hurricane Sally. So the trail would go right up to your uh, deck? No. No, no, no. The trail, the trail, not up to the deck. I'd say, well, it depends on how, say, what do you call them? Okay, so if that's the trail, then the then you're, right there, right. That's yeah, the would be at the bottom of your deck. Yeah, okay. Of so you're a foot or two off of the property line, but you're much further off of the trail. Yes. At that corner. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, I guess that it's, 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 if you see where the opening is back there in the back, that's basically the width of the trail. And it goes all the way back, kind of towards back to the other property. 12 feet. But I know that when, when someone, when an association develops green space for um, walking trails and so forth, the trail meanders based on the landscaping that is currently there and it looks like the foot traffic is in the white sand area. Um, I agree with that, yeah it is. And, and I guess that is considered a common area right there as well. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And we have a pool on the, there, there's my house and then there's a house to the left of me as we're looking at the slide and then there's a pool over there by the water. So people are you know, occasionally walking up and down the trail or driving their golf cart to get to the pool. If that helps. I think 
that one aerial shot showed the pool and it didn't. That kind of, you can see the trail from that shot. Can you bring that one up? Well, it's hard to see the trail. Board members, it appears uh, we have taken a special interest in uh, helping with this project. But <laughs> curious where the goat and the pig pen is that was shown on that. Now, now, I would comment that please come see us if you propose to put farm animals out there. It may not be allowed by the zoning. It was, it was strictly a joke to my <laughs> HOA. Our, our HOA is, has basically decommissioned. There was a, a, a lady named Connie running it for years, and that, they, I guess they all got to a big spat, and she resigned, and the new person taking over, I don't really like the man. I don't know him that well yet. I'm, I'm sure I'll probably get to like him. So I, I want to say that these things are all taken in. You know, these, are, these are public comments. So <laughs> if, if you want to do something else, if, if they hear all that, you may not. So be careful <laughs> with that. Well, well here, what, what if I decided to build a fence? Within that odd property line, fences, fences can't. See, I could, I could do that. The letter but this is but the, I would never want to do that. The letter of code requires. The letter of code is required. That's to build a property line. But again, right. if all of those protective features back there. Mm -hmm. There may be some things that well, as for sure. staff that we we'll have to right. protect. Yep. You have to be very yeah, careful when you when you when you are a buddy environmental but, sensitive. Yeah. But I guess the point I'm trying to make is. I probably could build a fence there within code. Wouldn't be the right thing to do, but it's within code. So you you know, if you want to follow code, I could build a fence. What is the distance between your the back of your house to the bottom of that landing? The, the back of your house right. to the bottom of the landing. Uh, the retaining wall? What is the uh, depth or the height? Where the word existing on the, on the back of your home to the actual well, distance of the new deck. How yes. Far, how far does that go down? From the, the house itself to the yeah. property line? Okay, so that's the landing, the the last rung, if you will, of that staircase is 40 feet. From the house. 40 feet from the back of the house. See, that doesn't. Your 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 drawing doesn't make sense. I'm trying to figure out where this 30 by 50, 15 foot deck is, and if the landing is, which you said you're going to remove the bottom part of that that staircase, which is the landing. Um, yeah, the landing is over here, of course, the long staircase going down. I, I can't hear you, sir. Right there. The landing, that, that, if you take the cursor straight down, that, that long staircase existing, that's an existing staircase. The landing, current landing, is right there. Right. So that's going away. The small three by two landing is going away. Okay, if you did that perpendicular to, to your house, what is the, the feet? From the edge of the proposed new deck to the house, how many feet? Is that what you're asking? I'm sorry? Uh, are you asking what is the measurement from the proposed edge of the new deck back to the house? How many feet? Yes. Okay, it's 20 feet from, from the back of the house to, the, to where your deck would start, correct? Yes, ma'am. And then you're going to go another 15 feet the for the deck, right? Yep. So that's uh, 35 feet, right? Because yes. I'm showing yep. just by rough measurements, you have less than 35 feet to build that 15-foot deck. 
I mean, I'm, I'm just using, you know, you see where it says 16.3, 16 feet 3 inches? Right, I'm just using that measurement and measuring from the back of the house to, to the property line. And I'm not even getting 30 feet, if you will, just from the edge of your house to the property line. It's, um, I mean, based on this drawing, which, you know, could be skewed is less than the 30 less than 30 feet and you're at 35 feet no i'm definitely not off of my property that's that's okay I'm, I'm well within property but well I'm if you tell me that you, the staircase is 20 feet yep. from the back of your house right. and you have another 15 feet of deck you have 35 feet going off the back of your house correct 30 20 I'm sorry say that again 35 feet to the back of the deck sure I'd say that's right are you just trying the to back of the deck yeah, are you trying to estimate or what are we trying to, are I, we trying can you come to the podium I, I'm har having a hard time hearing you okay so yes I would say 35 feet from the back of the deck to the front of the house, if that's what's, is your uh, question? Is it a question or a Right, I don't think you have that, that much room. Or, <laughs> no, based I on have plenty of room. No, I have plenty of room to build the deck within. Okay. What do you mean? I don't ba I'm, just, I'm just basing it on, on what you provided. Oh, yeah, I, I provided a pretty good drawing there. What, what are you not seeing that, that, I, that I, I do not see? Okay. Okay. Well, I'm, in, I'm just saying based on, on what you've told me. Are you saying it will not fit? Well, I'm saying that from the corner of your house, based on this drawing, to your lot line, you have... You, you probably have... You may have 30 feet. Okay. May. So what I'm saying is that your deck would encroach beyond that one foot, mm -mm. if not on the property line. No, 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 no. That's that's incorrect. I would not even. Uh, I would not be within the. Uh, within or at. I guess is the. Question. Within. Well, the way if I not have at the, the way I have line. it drawn out, it would be right at but again I can come back away two feet if that helps I mean I just I'm kind of lost at what your point is I'm sorry my point is that the size of your deck mm -hmm. is not to scale on this drawing well, I agree with that because I'm not a you know an engineer by any means I'm an electrician by trade. So, so let's try to Miss Miss Rick, are you saying that because it's, it's not the scale? It appears that I'm not looking. It appears that he may be encroaching into going beyond his property line from the, and he, he may he may he may be going over over the property line in some property that's not owned to him. And that's what it, you're trying to concern with that, based upon what you are looking at the site plan itself uh yes and i want want my fellow board members to understand that what he what you're seeing is not exactly accurate as to the scope of the deck that he wants to put in that space uh, if we're talking about a trail that meanders right up to the deck no it's not you can see as opposed the, to the squiggly lines are the trail basically and then the deck is off of that squiggly line. That's but the picture that, right. the photograph that I've seen, the deck comes right up to. Well, it's washed away. You know, the trail's washed away. It 
So I think the main question is going to be, you know, he, what he's um, said is that now really um, based on um, his calculations, the deck that he wants is really two feet from the property line. Yes, I can go two feet, easy. And so I guess it's Cut it back a little bit. better than one foot. Well, this variance we're looking at is one foot it would mm -hmm. two feet eliminate it from it, it our is, address is it, it, it still have to meet the criteria is it a hardship is it is it a hardship with the land that's the right. that's the, that's the criteria is it and that's why staffs whether it's one feet two feet uh, I'm just saying that the problem going the problem with one feet is much more problematic than than two feet but the issue is still does it meet the criteria for a variance, and that's what the board have to make a decision upon. Staff indicated that it that it does not, but the board has a decision to to say that it can or does not. So right, that, and to answer your question, the two feet, I believe the criteria from staff would still be answered the yes. same. Yes. There'd what is, what is the required setback? Five. Five, five feet. Yeah. Okay. Right. Five. So five the deck could be pushed back to the house five feet, and then he would be within. It wouldn't need to be here, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Then that's what the issue when it came in at permitting, yeah. um, front counter, showing it was, you know, that it didn't. It was less than five feet, and we started looking at okay, but it was going to be one foot, and that would trigger this process. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They caught it right off when I, I went to pull the permit. So we have criteria one, two, four, and five to deny the the variance. And if Caleb could walk through those findings of facts and just for us, thank you. So, um, you know, they're requesting a variance to reduce the five foot accessory setback um, requirement to one foot for the construction of this deck. Um, concerning criteria one, um, special conditions and circumstances, um, we found that this lot has a somewhat unique shaped backyard with less space than the lot to the east, but more lot than the lot to the west. This does not rise to the level of hardship in use of the land as designed. Um, criterion two, special conditions and circumstances do not result from the actions of the applicant. Our findings of fact show that the lot was purchased and platted. The desire to reduce the setback for a deck is the action of the applicant. Uh, criterion three, granting the variance requested will not confer any um, special privilege denied by the land development code to other lands, buildings, or structures in the same zoning. Our finding facts of, uh, findings of fact show that granting the variance requested will not confer the applicant any special privilege that is denied by the land development code to other lands, buildings, or other structures in the same zoning district. A grant of relief from the setback requirements of the land development code can be requested through this discretionary review of the Board of Adjustment is available to all. Concerning criterion four, um, our findings of fact state that the strict application of the provisions of the land development code would not deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by the other properties in the same zoning district under the terms of the land development code and would not create an unnecessary and undue hardship on the applicant. Concerning criterion five, findings of fact show that the requested variance is not, the necessarily, not necessarily to make possible the reasonable use of the land. The lot was platted for a single family residence to be constructed within the setbacks and that is what is currently on the land. And concerning the criterion six, um, the findings of fact is graining of this variance would not appear to be injurious to the area or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. The nature trail behind the house will remain open. And finally, our staff recommendation, um, we find that it cannot meet the criterion one, two, four, and five, and we recommend denial of the variance. Well done, well done, yeah. So, your decision. <laughs> well, we have to make a decision, board. Any, any further questions of staff or applicant? No. I'd no. like to make a motion. Yes, sir. I move that we accept the staff recommendation and deny the variance. We have a motion. Do we have a second? 
I'll second. We have a second by uh, Judy. Motion by Marty, second by Judy. Any uh, discussion? Yeah, I just want to say that um, with respect to the setback, um, there is plenty of room to move that deck back. It would go higher, but he can he can easily move the design back the five feet, then it wouldn't be a problem. It'd go lower because it's on a hill. So if I went back uh, towards the house, it'd be, it'd be lower because it, do, it doesn't drop off. As okay. But but anyways. There, my point is there's room, and, and therefore um, uh, there isn't an unusual uh, situation here. The uh, motion is to accept uh, staff's findings of fact. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Passes unanimously. No problem. I'll just say Sorry, 15 we, grand. Sorry, we feel no for you. You just cost the contractor a lot of money, but that's all good. Appreciate your time. Board, I just wanted to mention that we still need to accept the August 18th minutes. I can't right. hear you. Well, we'll we have help to accept you if we can. the August 18th minutes. Hmm? Just, we have to accept the August 18th minutes. You must have skipped that in the beginning. I don't understand. The August 18th minutes. Oh, we need to oh, those. oh. I got thrown off on this. Yes, you did. Those in favor of the August 16th minutes uh, say yay. Hey. Who, who wants the motion and second it? I'll motion. Thank you. Judy moves. Thank you. <laughs> and don't forget next week. Monday. Thank, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, are we going to be able to have both hearings in one day? The only point I was trying to make, and I wasn't able to make it about it, is is just I thought the order of the cases ought to be reversed. That's the only thing that I wasn't going to discuss the case or anything like that. I just felt like that we would hear the motion to dismiss first and then Well, that was my only point, and I wasn't able to make my point. And I, I mean, it's not a big deal. I, I understand, but still. And, and I understand, Mr. Gump, but, but, but when I say that this case is extremely challenging, following the advice of the illegal, of, of the, the BOA, is absolutely essential. Because if there's any inkling, if there's an inkling, of something that's that hasn't been followed according to the quasi judicial rules, it could it could have, it could be extremely challenging. So that's why I cannot stress how enough you got a good counsel. Listen, because this is this is controversial, and she knows all about it. Any other any other business? If not, no objection. We stand adjourned.